All right, all right, all right. What's we up, guys? Live. We got a special guest tonight with us. Look at there. <laughs> the battle of the physical copy guys. <laughs> <laughs> we love our physical copies, damn it. Yeah, this is our friend Bush, man. He's awesome. Yes. Nice. Um. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, like Trent said, man, we have our buddy Bunch here with us today. Yeah. He, awesome um, guy, man, awesome guy. He, he is an awesome guy, and he, he is, he's, you know, it's his fault that we're doing this one. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we were playing D and D, uh, and it just came up out of nowhere, and uh, me and Doug were talking. It's almost like what the fiftieth anniversary on the dot of this movie. Yeah, yeah. It's what forty, uh, for, 49 years ago. Um, yeah. it, 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 this movie was released on uh, November 17th, 1972. So basically 49 years ago next week. Yeah. And it just came up randomly in D&D &D and like, yeah. you got to watch that, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're celebrating uh, all things vampires and Dracula and all the blood sucking yeah. stuff this, uh, this month. You know, you have night. to, you, you can't think of Dracula. I can't think of Dracula without, without thinking about Sir Christopher Lee. Yeah. Yeah, man. You, you know? Yeah. You just, Definitely. you can't think about it without him. Yeah. And, um. Like none to Bela Lugosi. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh. uh yeah, Bela's you know, cool, I think, I think of Bela as well. But, you know, hand yeah. in hand with Bela will, will be Christopher Lee. I, I mean, yeah. truthfully, I put Sir Christopher above Bela. I know some people will find that blasphemous and eh, get over it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, I saw Sir Christopher Lee play Dracula before I saw Bela. I was aware of Bela. Some book I rented, it, I rented, I borrowed from the library, had a picture of Bela. And I was wee, wee little fellow, like five, six, seven. For some reason, I was terrified of Bela. The house we lived in. <laughs> Well, the bathroom and the washer and dryer were in the very back. And the light, you know, he, he had to go all the way through the dark to turn on the light. And for whatever reason, I had become convinced that Bela was back there and he was going to suck my blood. <laughs> well, wasting his time with a, you know, eight-year-old boy in East Tennessee. I don't know, but. Yeah. Hey, he played the part well, man. You know? He did. I mean, <laughs> classic. Yeah. Um. My, my when I was a kid, uh, Dracula. I think I think it was Bella Lugosi's Dracula was playing on uh, on TV, and uh, I was looking for. I was like, I was I was a young dude. I was younger than little Jay is now, and I was so looking oh, forward man. to it. it was it, I was so looking forward to seeing Dracula, and you know I knew a little bit about Dracula. You know. Uh, but being like, you know, five years old, you know, you don't or know a lot about Dracula, but uh, I knew he slept in coffins, you know, and uh, we, we, we just got through moving um, and uh, we, we had a, uh, we had a bunch of boxes. So I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to sleep in my coffin. So I'd go in and I'm, I'm sleeping in the, uh, the cardboard box and, uh, <laughs> My family didn't know where I was. <laughs> like they were freaking out. They were like, "Where, where did Doug go?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, I um, unfortunately was not able to see Dracula that night. Um, but um, like forty years ago later, I finally watched Dracula. I went yeah. that long with never watching uh, <laughs> Bella Lugosi's Dracula. Uh, dude, much like dude. much like you, Butch, my first actual seeing a Dracula, like, well, I actually, I saw uh, Francis Ford Coppola's before I saw the horror of Dracula. <laughs> yeah, but I never watch, uh, you know, the Dracula because in in my head, as a kid, little Doug missed the chance to see Dracula, so I was like, it's going to be a special time now. Right, yeah, I, I, it's it's weird shit you get in your head. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Dude, like vampires are scary when you're a kid. I remember uh, Dracula was scary. I remember uh, 
Barnabas Collins and Dark Shadows. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The hell out of me, dude. I, who played him? I can't even remember the guy's name. Jonathan Freed. Uh, John, Jonathan, uh, what's that? Jonathan Freed, I believe is how you say his name. Yeah, dude. He used to scare the hell out of me, man. Like, Let me throw a shout out to my friend Patrick uh, McCray. He was the writer of the Dark Shadows Daybook, which is. Oh, wow. Oh. Was oh, yeah. a number one selling book on Amazon. Of course, I have my copy. <laughs> yeah, and man knows his dark shadows. Let me tell you, oh, so I that, love that show, man. Dude, dude, my cousin Bob, he freaking loves dark shadows as yeah. well. Me yeah, me and Bob always get on some dark a, shadows. Uh, a, a Christmas gift or birthday gift? Seriously, uh, the Dark Shadows Day Book. Oh yeah, dude. I gotta get it's that. called Dark Shadows Day, as in D A Y. Yeah, D A Y B O O K. And it's by Patrick yeah. McCray. Cool, cool. Yeah, man, that was that was the best soap opera ever, man. Days of our life. <laughs> days of our life second, but Okay, no. I was I was gonna say, yeah, is it better yeah. than days? I mean Marlena and being possessed. I mean Yeah, that was funny, <laughs> but like the whole gothic thing with the mm. dark shadows and the vampires. Oh, I'm that. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh. So uh yeah, yeah. Um while we're on uh, TV, uh, vampires on TV. I mean, you, you can't go wrong with Buffy, the Vampire Slayer. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe a couple of seasons. Even though most yeah. people hate season yeah. six, that's my favorite season. <laughs> but, Buffy was a good show. Soon as, oh, I uh, loved it. As soon as Angel came out, I, th I I really thought Angel first three seasons of Buffy are great. Okay, let me go ahead and get that out of the way. Um. Then when they split, and you got Buffy and Angel on, uh, not not really at the same time, but you know they're being pro yeah. pro pro produced during the same time. I thought Angel was a much better show. I don't know, maybe maybe him being a guy, me being a guy, her being a woman, and me not being a woman. I, I know, like I've tried to read, uh, what's the what's the, Hunger Games? I, I just couldn't yeah, get into. It. You know, I I, I I guess maybe I have trouble relating. To uh, a woman perspective, you know, I read a uh -huh. few and, and fine, but anyway, uh, I thought Angel was great. And Is that the one with Glenn Quinn had him in it, like, I can't yeah, right at the very beginning, yeah, 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 uh, with, with, with yeah, yeah. Dude, that's a fucking awesome movie. Not, not that sequel shit. Yeah, not no. the sequel. Even yeah. with Ken Foray, my favorite actor from Dawn of the Dead, and, and you know, just an amazing guy. Yeah. And Egg can't make a movie interesting. Yeah, that. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> That's all right, guys. So um, if you're going to watch with us at home, go ahead and get, get ready. Uh, we'll, we'll all try to, you know, we'll, we'll do a queue up here in a sec, and we'll all. Uh, start with uh, with with the regular AD nineteen seventy two. We get synced up good. Well, yeah. everybody started. I did some research, hopefully for Trent. Uh, yeah, this is uh, my first first time seeing it. So. First time watch. Yeah, there you go. This is my first time being live on, on the internet, and it's first time Trent's first time watching uh, AD seventy two. So yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, this was inspired, pushed upon, uh, with the, uh, Warner, with Warner Brothers with a film called Count Yorga, which I don't know if you're familiar with. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was one of the reasons they brought Dracula in to more modern times. Plus the fact, if you watch the last couple of Dracula's, Hammer Dracula's, uh, let's see, there's Scars of Dracula, which is, I hate to say it, but oof. And taste the blood of Dracula, which is okay, but it's no Dracula Prince of Darkness. Yeah. I think they saw the writing on the wall and came up with this. Now, Sir Christopher Lee was opposed to it because he felt that Dracula should be in go be gothic, you know, in the gothic mm -hmm. setting. Yeah. Um, I'm not certainly, I know he's passed, but I'm certainly not going to tell the man that played Dracula more times than anybody. I know more about Dracula than he does, but this right. one works. Satanic rights, <laughs> aka Dracula and his vampire brides, 
aka Dracula is dead and well and living in in London. Um, yeah, that one doesn't work as well. Uh, and I it, still that one's it. directed by the same guy too. Is it wrote by the same guy? Because I, I think this one's wrote by Don Hodgington. Ho- Ho- I didn't make reference stuff, so I can't tell you that real quick. Uh, it's a Don Houghton. Don Houghton. Uh, yeah, something like that. It's a semi sequel to this. Uh, mm-hmm. hey, I'm going to turn to my TV and nobody can see my TV. Sorry. I, by the way, there's <laughs> that's my skull, Boris. <clears throat> Boris says hello. Hi, Boris. <laughs> um, so, you know, they were trying to move this forward. Um, Trent, as we get ready to watch this, the opening scene is kind of a flashback. And then it kicks into. Contemporary, modern day, aka 1972. You'll see it. You'll it's see this going over it. And then this, I love this soundtrack. And, and I was watching. Yeah, I was going to say the music I hear is killer in it. I think it is. Now I watched a video on YouTube, and some guy, and like the guy's first comments was this crappy. You know, it doesn't sound that good, and the music's not good. And then he starts talking. He, I mean, he starts ragging the soundtrack. I'm like, my wife looks at me, and she goes, "Uh oh." I let him go. <laughs> mm. I love this. Seriously, we were watching this before we were married, and it gets to the point where the uh, the credits are rolling. It's like dun 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 dun. dun, dun. Yeah, that's like God. I love this soundtrack. She went and ordered it for me from Amazon. Dude, that's uh, awesome soundtrack. Yeah, uh, I heard a little but, bit of the first music, and it sounded really intense, man. It oh yeah, whacking. yeah. Right now, the Blu Ray's playing it over and over and over with the, uh, and I'm just you know I'm. Yeah, the fucking yeah. horn yeah. section, just you know, yeah. dun, dun. who did the score before yeah. we start? Real quick, let's see. Uh, I don't know, Mike, but I, Mike Vickers, Mike Vickers, Mike Vickers, the, yeah, something about it kind of reminds me of Bond. I don't know, yeah. it's got a it's got a Bond feel to, to this, uh, this little this little piece here that's playing over and over and over, and you know, actually, a couple of these. You know, but by then, let's see, we were already to Roger Moore. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. Um, if not, we were at the very end of Sean Connery when he came back. A couple of these people actually were in Bond movies. We got one that was in uh, a Timothy Dalton License to Kill. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. And there's another guy that was in Golden. Golden. Golden, golden eye, golden eye, golden eye, golden eye. Golden eye. And of course, Sir Christopher Lee was the man with the golden gun. Yeah, he actually. Yeah. Oh, interesting. No, Sir Christopher Lee by marriage is related to Ian Fleming. Whoa, that's cool. Oh, that's <laughs> crazy. He was going to play Doctor No. Really? Now that may just be a, you know two cousins talking. Sure, man. If it ever gets done, you can play him. Yeah. And, uh, but eventually, they got around. He got around to playing, and he does a really good job, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I watch it for him. It's it's in the early uh, Roger Moore's, and you got that dumb, stupid sh- Southern sheriff. Hey, boy, what you doing over here, boy? It's like, yeah. <laughs> Who's what? I, I, what was my favorite line from what? Uh, a secret agent on whose side? He's like, <laughs> you know, he's tobacco out. you that British secret yeah. agent in Britain. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, that's that's a good movie, man. It's funny as hell. Do we mention both of these guys are in Star Wars? I don't know if we did live. Oh, yeah, you got Peter Cushion and Sarah Christopher Lee. Yep. Yeah. You got the two and Tarkin. And Grand Moff Yeah. I was. I had to go see um, Rogue One to see the CGI on Peter Cushing, and uh-huh. just I, I liked I liked the movie, and sometimes the CGI was great, sometimes it wasn't, and unfortunately for me, the voice was a little off in spots. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's like, hey, I don't I don't care. He, I really thought Lucas messed up by not bringing him back. Oh, you're the clone, or you're the brother. Or, Whatever, but anyway, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. anyway, I think we need to get this movie started, fellas. Yes, Let's are you guys ready? Let's do it. All right, everybody at home, get ready. Say the word, ready. 
five, okay. four, three, two, one. All righty. That ain't too loud, is it, y'all? Um, I can not too bad on me. But y'all know about the stuff and I do. Let's see when when the music comes on. We'll know. Just want to make sure not to get hit, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'd bring it down just a little bit more. I wish okay. you could have uh, fixed it to where you had your headphones. I know, man. So we're in, uh, Butch, did you say we're in 1872 right now? Oh, nope. um, there he tells him right there. <laughs> now this really, I think this was a, this was kind of a, a, a gimme to the old fans of Hammer. You know, giving you your little gothic. You, you know, I would have loved yeah. to see it lead up to this. Yeah, and. Uh, other than that, right there, apparently Peter Cushing did his own studs. Really? Wow, that's awesome, man! And this oh, is wait. crazy. Like he's on a buggy. Yeah, like who, who's who's this fella? We better keep an eye on him. Yeah. Oh no, it's the sun. Wheel goes off in a. Oh, that's beautiful! That scene where the key. Yeah. Yeah, that's like some Keith Diamond shit, dude. <laughs> yeah, you know, like some fucking some Blood Abigail. Black Horseman. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm a little bit ahead of you. I'm gonna pause for just a second. Okay. Well, I'm I'm singing um the spinning uh, wheel and yeah, that's, uh, that's where I'm at. Dracula's already out for me. Now the wheel's off. Yeah. Then Helsing is... Let me is... know when you after the crash. I'll start back up. Oh, but the, cra the crash has happened. Yeah. Yeah, well, right, right now... Uh, uh, Dracula just took a wheel to the chest, I guess is what's going yeah. on. Yeah, he put a wheel I through it. <laughs> Are you up with us now? Or? Yeah, I think so. We're right about the same. Okay. okay. Interestingly enough, this is only the second time that they played Van Helsing and Christopher, or I'm sorry, Van Helsing and Dracula against each other. Yeah. Uh, of course, the first one was Horror of Dracula, known as Dracula in England. Back in uh, 58, I believe. Yeah, Horror Dracula. That's the one my friend, I think, was watching the other night I was talking about on Halloween. Yeah, that, that's cool. yeah, that's the original yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Well, original for them, but yeah. Ooh. I want to see a modern-day film with CGI do a dissolve scene like that where they, they, they had to set the camera and slowly, you know, change it, change it, change it. I yeah. want to see CGI do that perfectly. So how are oh, we going to explain this? I mean, it, oh, is that going to explain it? Whatever that is that's left there. I mean, he's been really? staked. You know, Dracula's gone at this point. Hey, hey, even Muffy knows he always comes back. <laughs> yeah, Dracula. Dude, uh, I love what they do with this old film. Like, you know, it's not the special effects look just really cool, man. It's not like, you know, computerized. They had to do it like in, in all, like all practical look stuff. Yeah. I mean, no, don't get me wrong. I I, I don't mind some CGI. Um, it, it can do things that uh, you just, you know, you can't do. So, yeah. But yeah. So, what's this dude doing? I mean, you're going to scrape up some ashes? Yeah, you're yep. getting his ashes. And he got the ring. Yep. Now, there's a thing online, people talking about how this doesn't match up with the timeline of horror of Dracula. Mm -hmm. um, I disagree. That could be the, the Peter Cushing 
Van Helsing that just passed, I believe his name's Lorimer. We see his tombstone here in just a minute. That could be the father. I'm sorry. Okay, Lawrence. That could be the father Van Helsing. of the Van Helsing that's in Horror of Dracula. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense, man. Uh, it's just, I don't know, things are easy. I'm trying to think back to, yeah, what Dracula was I seen before this one. And um, owing to the various incarnations of Dracula in the Hammer films, like the one you know, in Prince of Darkness, he doesn't speak. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, just some of the weird stuff he does, I always think maybe the reason that happens is because part of his ashes are gone. So he doesn't completely reform. Oh, wow. Quoting Bible verses. That's awesome, dude. She'll never die. He didn't believe okay. it in me. Here comes your here come here comes the soundtrack. Took one headphone off so I could hear it better. Yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, I can I take the bond in it. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, I mean I, I definitely I can I can definitely see that. Or, or, I'm sorry, hear that. Um, but movie. nevertheless, it's it's fucking catchy. Oh, it's yeah. fucking very, very up tempo. Yeah. Not what you'd expect in a, a vampire Dracula film, man. You know, by British by British people. I mean, this is. I don't know if yeah. you've ever seen Blackula. I thought about this the other day. I don't know if you've ever seen Blackula, but I think this would be a good companion piece to Blackula. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think, uh, one of the things I love about all the black exploitation films is they have great music in them. Yeah, yeah. I love black exploitation, man. Very good music. You know. It is. At least in my opinion. Uh, yeah. Obviously, that guy on that video didn't agree. Apparently, this is yeah, uh, like a... in England. I don't know much about yeah. Chelsea. Is this in London, or I'm, I'm guessing London, Chelsea. right? The Chelsea okay. District of London. Okay, yeah. Now we're going to go into um, a part of the film I really don't like. They have this band playing Stone Ground. Stone, uh, according to legend, that was supposed to be the faces, and I presume that's the one. Yeah. See, that would have been cool had Rod Stewart up in this bitch. Love Rod Stewart. <laughs> and Jeff Beck. Jeff Peck was in uh, Faces, right? Yeah, Jeff Beck, Jeff Beck, uh, Rod Stewart. Uh, forget who. If I ever get a chance to see Rod Stewart, dude, I am there, dude. Like, I probably never will, but I mean, dude, like, I, dude, I back in Rod the Stewart. days, man, you you didn't just this band was like there's as many members of this band as there's as fucking Slipknot. Yeah, nine people. Oh, the hippies look. <laughs> It's like uh, it's like the Omen Brothers and this chick eating an apple. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. The yeah, that's great, baby. All right, if nobody minds, I want to make some points about our, our cast here. Okay, yeah, go for it, go for it, man. Uh, I know we're probably a little, just a little bit out of sync, so I'll try to. The dude with the hat. Okay. Is, his name is Johnny yeah. Alley Card. He's the descendant of the guy from. 100 years ago, they got the ashes. Okay, okay. okay. You know, we were talking about Bela Lugosi earlier. If you know uh, <clears throat> the the um, Universal Dracula's Alucard is Dracula spelled backwards. Yes. Oh, wow, yeah. That is weird. Yeah. The the silly guy here in the monk robe, he, he's a reoccurring character whose name I don't even remember. If you see the guy in the glasses and the tuxedo whose birthday party is, he always makes me think of Michael Caine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. I, just, I just don't care for these songs, but that the little what, bit. What's, girl. Go ahead, I'm what's, sorry. What's crazy is you're, 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 it's taking place in, 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 you know, in England. And you mm-hmm. have all these fucking amazing bands in England, but yet yeah. they get a fucking band like this from fucking the U.S. to play. Apparently, it was last minute, and this is the only people that could be there in time to film. Yeah, 
dude. Faces would have made a lot more sense. Faces would have been awesome, dude. Yeah. Wait, I don't know. Where is Rod Stewart from? England. He's from England, isn't he? Yeah. I thought he was. I want to say Scotland, but don't quote me on that. Yeah, oh, Scotland. Okay, Scotland, oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, he's from the Isle there. Uh, yeah, he's Scottish. All right. Yeah. It's kind of. It is kind and of funny. They called the police. And they're, they have a little disagreement about how long it'll take the police to get there. <laughs> They got the, the police to play there. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Sting and us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but Sting wanted too much money. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they got a fight. The with it. girl there in the uh, pink dress is Stephanie Beecham. She plays Jessica Van Helsing. Oh, okay. A fun fact about her: uh, in the '90s. She played Dylan's mom on Beverly Hills 90120. Oh, wow. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. I believe she was on Perry. Dynasty. Yes. Yes, she was on Dynasty as well. She yeah. played uh, Crystal, Crystal yeah. Carrington. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Trent. I thought, didn't she play Crystal Carrington on Dynasty? Or? No, it might no, be no. a different one. No, it was a different one. Okay. Uh, but uh, Christopher Neem, or Neemy, I'm not sure how to say his name, that plays Johnny Alucard. Was on uh, Dynasty also. I, there's a picture I have somewhere showing them, you know, yeah. like in a little bit years later, 10, 15 years later, in a scene together. You were talking That's about cool. <clears throat> you talking about the awesome, soundtrack sounding kind of bondish. Uh, parts of this makes me think of uh, the the Avengers TV show with uh, Patrick McNee. Okay, I, yeah. I never, I never really watched that though. But I know, I know what you're talking about. Though the next one, the Satanic Rites of Dracula, mm -hmm. really, really has an Avengers feel to it. And, and yeah. all of you that may be watching that don't know, I'm not talking about Thor and Captain America. So, no, I know, I know, um, I know, I know. But, uh, let's so, see. I, I don't think I've ever seen Satanic Rites. Well, you know, we we can we can uh, watch that one too. You know, maybe not yeah, tonight. I'd like to. I, I haven't seen Satanic Rites either. The uh, the bouncing brunette, I believe she's wearing black, is yeah. uh, Caroline Monroe, who was one of the first people to have two roles in, in two different James Bond, James Bond films. What what's her name? Caroline Monroe. There she, she goes outside. Yeah, she's in a black outfit. Ooh, man, she's got some also, she Jeez. was also uh, the photographer for Maniac. Really? Yes. She, she was the one that was taking pictures of them and then, you know, yeah. It's been forever since I saw Maniac. That girl in the blue's got cute feet. You see, like when she was dancing. Johnny I don't know. This, this guy has charisma. Really? I always just thought he was a jerk. I, I mean, I don't know. Like that, yeah. I mean, I, I guess... Think, I would think he was a vampire, but I don't know, man. Like, I'm not going to say if anything. Him, like, if I saw him at a party, I'd be like, there's something really crazy about that guy, man, you know? I mean, I think he has charisma. Like you know, he could have been. He could have, uh, you know, been in like Clockwork Orange or some shit. Yeah, yeah, like that kind of shit. Peace, man. I like to think the cop cop just clobbered. I mean, <laughs> whoa, what the fuck? That kind of fucking dude from Alabama on there? What the yeah, hell? Yeah, no, he's so high. He's like, oh. <laughs> For this fucking Alabama hat or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Peace, man. I, I don't get why the dude's still dressed like a monk. I I've never understood that part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, um, let's see. A couple things. I'm not sure how I remember them. The attractive African-American lady sitting next to Johnny 
Uh, she gave up acting and started writing children's books. Really? Yeah. I'm trying to. I was trying. I, there was something I watched that talked about, a lot about them, and of course Christopher Neem and uh, Stephanie Beecham continued yeah, to she's act. She's really pretty, man, right there in this this movie. Which one? I just uh, the the African American girl you talking about. But I, my, I, I have to admit, uh, every time Caroline Monroe is on the screen, just like what, what, what year? The Clockwork Orange come out because I mean this is even reminding me of Clockwork Orange, like this whole scene right here. Yeah, except they're not Clockwork drinking. Clockwork came out in seventy what no seventy three. I don't have to look. I'm it up. looking Man, on the back of the wrong. fucking. I don't want to tell you wrong. Let's see. Clockwork came out in. Hit the Googles here. When did Clockwork Orange come out? I mean, I'm starting to look on the back of the damn... 72. Well, it's it's 50, 50 years, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, 72 as well, yeah. Yeah, the, the, they were definitely drinking the same fucking uh, Kool-Aid back in these days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hell, man, I'd like to do clockwork sometime, man. Look. So when in a, in a psychos setting, I don't know Norman Bates, but, you know... Yeah. The guy with the, I believe they're pronounced Ascot, sitting next to Caroline Monroe. I can't remember his name, but he's uh, he's Jessica's boyfriend. Unfortunately, I can't turn the subtitles on. Oh. So, so another thing that this movie's already keeps reminding me of is. Um, the, the the look it's like did did the, whoever directed Faster Pussycats cover of You're So Vain like totally watch this movie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. I could see that shit too, man. Definitely. I think yeah. it's the hat though. <laughs> yeah. One of the things I love about watching older films. Number one, I like to look at at uh, like at uh, gas stations and see how much gas was, or see how oh, much yeah. Yeah. prices were. Like and, fifty cents uh, a gallon or shit, you know. Thirteen like, cents or yeah. Yeah. Um just how different the world looked then, you know. Um uh, yeah. Sometimes it's a reminder, uh like like uh like Dawn of the Dead, the one, the only, the original. Yeah. Crap, I'm gonna watch that was a futuristic movie once and it was like uh I can't remember which one it was, but it was like it said gas, four dollars a gallon. This was back in the nineties. I was like, holy crap, four dollars a gallon, and now it's like what almost there. I mean, it's getting there, getting up there, you know. What what were you saying, Butch? Uh just uh the, the, some of the fashions as a kid I can remember seeing or possibly wearing uh just to point out in 78 i was eight so i didn't you know i wore what my parents bought so. yeah but i mean i can look at that film and to me i can tell that's that's the mid late 70s by the fashions and, and the the things you can see in the background yeah mm -hmm. but it's I not the hats they wore you know it, it to me because i've watched that film so many times literally in the hundreds if not thousands of times and I, I don't mean that to make me sound like a badass or nothing. I used to just put it in. And like, I'd be cleaning the house, and it'd be playing. <laughs> and, oh, you're uh, such a badass, dude. You totally thank you. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't... Yes, I can see the 70s stuff in it, but it's not like, oh, it's the 70s. It's just more like, oh, yeah. That that was the yeah. end. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know what this film could really use? It could use some more Peter Cushing. And I think yeah. we're about to... Oh. Uh, yeah. Look at that ugly car that poor man is driving. Oh, yeah. It's awesome, dude. I love that so, car. I think Peter Cushing was supposed to be Jessica's dad, but he recently like f lost his wife, and they said he aged a lot from that. And then they ended up making him her... His grandfather. Yeah, grandfather. Yeah. Uh, I've heard all that before. Uh, very true. Apparently, he was just devoted his wife. Her name's Helen. 
Mm -hmm. And she passed. He openly said, you know, I'm just waiting to die so I can be with her again. Oh. (laughs) And uh, I met Dave Prowse late 90s over at Collector's Universe. Mm -hmm. And I asked him about it. And he's like, oh, yeah. He said he looked like he'd aged. I, I, I'm I'm not directly quoting him, so, but he's like you know he he was just sad after yeah. that. Yeah. He so like, Helen's picture is in here somewhere. I read, um, like in his uh, in his I house. I think she's on his desk later. Okay. Yeah. For teeth of the black mass. <laughs> <laughs> Looks yeah, like Brooke. Looks like Brookhaven's uh, middle school's library, dude. <laughs> it does. <laughs> there it is. Cool to have in your house, though. Yeah. yeah. Man, her mullet, though. Oh, gosh. Well, I've often wondered. It, it just doesn't look real. I, I keep wondering if that's a wig. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I would agree too. I think it is probably. This is not a subject to mess around with. Hell no. No. Have you ever seen that video of Christopher Lee, Sir Christopher Lee, talking about messing with black magic for real? Mm-hmm. Oh man, he get he gets dead serious. He's like, do not do it. You will lose yeah. your mind, you will lose your soul, you will lose everything. And it's just yeah. I watched it like Look five it. times. And it what just, in the world? Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin said pretty much the same thing, man. He got to fucking around with that shit, that like Crowley shit and stuff, mm-hmm. man, you know. He, 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 go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say he he's talking uh circus release talking in that video. They say, you know, he's like, they say I have 200,000 books or something. And he goes, I wouldn't have a place to sit down. <clears throat> and he's, he's talking about, you know, the black magic. And then he leads in the, and he just, I mean, he turns directly to the camera and he's like, and it's like the coolest dad speech ever. Mm. Yeah. It's one of them things I like to know about, but I wouldn't like to fuck with it and do shit with it. Like, you know, I'm not trying to manipulate it or, you know, so I, well, I feel like no, no, the dark, but lean toward the light. You know, that's how. Do know that she's not sleeping with anybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and she's not dropping acid. She's not shooting up. I like yeah. that. That was. That's oh, he's, he's got to put it back where it belongs. Put it back yeah. on that show. Oh. Then something caught his eye. <gasps> bum, bum, bum. Yes. Oh yeah. The... All right. Now Trent in our D and D game, we were talking about consecrated and desecrated. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know if you're to the point yet. With the, they'll come to this uh, church that's been uh, uh, shut down. And... Yeah, I'm seeing the vampire stuff right now. Uh, where he's looking at. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. It's it's desecrated, not in a bad way. It's just is meaning it, but it's more just not consecrated anymore. It's it's not considered yeah. a holy place. Yeah. This is what I was talking about when we were when it first led to all this. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Crazy Johnny. Uh, I, I guess one of the reasons, maybe one of the reasons I don't like Johnny is he reminds me of some people I used to know. I, I hesitate to call them friends. Yeah. They led me down some paths that, that uh, I shouldn't yeah. have gone. Yeah. So he, he decided here, got... to have a black mass in a desecrated church. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah. It does take Lord this move. I will say that. But are you all to the graveyard yet? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We just, uh, they just went through the, uh, the gate. Okay. And, and she's looking like a lot like Prince right now. <laughs> kind of like my, uh, my D and D character in, uh, yeah. <laughs> Kevin's game. 
the purple one. Oh, that's a good girl. He's a good girl. Yeah, I'm hoping my, my kitty stay upstairs. <laughs> yeah. I got Melina in here. She's been really good so far. I fed them extra, so hopefully they're sleeping. Yeah. I tell you, something I find odd, but also my, my family's pretty close knit, so maybe it's just me, my experiences. She doesn't know that her, I guess, great grandfather is buried here. If you've got oh, to that. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, now I don't know where all my ancestors are buried, but I do know where, you know, all my grandparents are buried. Yeah, me too. Yeah. But she didn't, she doesn't know. She's, yeah, unaware. Yeah. That's when he died. Okay. What's that? What does he? What does he? he calls him something. I think he calls him a, a forebearer. Of oh her. God! We got the prankster here, man. Yeah, this guy's, fucking the monk. <laughs> yeah, this guy's a weenie. It's the she it, he's the Shelly from Friday the Thirteenth <laughs> Part Three before. Yeah, he's the Shelly. Totally yep, exactly. Yeah. Oh, you got the Shelly. Yeah, so when this uh, movie aired in '81 on CBS, it was known as Dracula Today. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, something I read talked about said that as this, as the year or two came on and it went to different countries, like mm -hmm. say India in 73, they changed the tri title to Dracula AD 1973. Yeah, yeah, I read that yeah. too. Yeah, I read something about that. Oh, <laughs> God, dude is fucking loco. I know, he's Looney Tunes, man. He's loco. Me loco. Mm. That's a beautiful, beautiful shot inside is, the uh, church there. Look, mm -hmm. that cross is upside down, dude. Oh, dude. God, it is. Dude, yeah. they're having black mass. Yeah. God, this looks so beautiful. Yeah, that's good. I mean, good, from good, being good, from good, 1972, yeah. I mean, this it's unbelievable. It's one of the reasons I really love Technicolor. Like, if when you watch the old Hammer stuff and the way mm -hmm. the color jumps right out at you, mm -hmm. Technicolor is great. It's a little yeah. more muted, but still, they're. I mean, they're wearing the black, and dude's got his uh, brown vest, and and she's got on yeah. her. And Monk's got on his Monk outfit. Now they don't say it, as I recall, but I always got the impression that they they took something here, the characters obviously, or or they smoked something, or yeah. they all started a little weird. Damn, yeah, she gets hit played on that fucking. Uh, either did acid or like I mean, it takes acid a long time to kick in, but either they smoked something or did I, 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 I'm guessing, dude. You know, Jessica says say. she didn't do any shooting up, sleeping with anybody, or acid, Trent. I'm gonna remind you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's definitely acid right there, man. Dude, uh, relax, others. don't do it. Yeah, way they're like, like, writhing around and shit. Oh. Dude, you're talking Technicolor. Can you still film in that? You guys know, like, if I was a filmmaker yeah. today, I would try to do yeah. Technicolor filming, man. Like, from the well, you know, everything. Well, not everything, but all the big studios, uh, they're all digital. So you just have to yeah. uh, run it through something. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I love Technicolor. I really wish. Like, I would love to do, like, you know, you ever seen the old Bewitch and I Dream a Genie? Like, the tech, when it first came out, like, film like that, you know, where the colors just stand out and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude, I, I would love it if I was a filmmaker, you know. Yeah, I love that, dude. I agree with you there, dude. I I kind of wish I watched this back in the day on when it was on VHS. Yeah. And then I, I you know, 
Unfortunately, I never watched this on VHS. Would you like to? Do you have it on VHS? I, I mean, I, the, the thing I would like to do is just watch it and then watch it again on Blu-ray just to get that, how much it's improved. Um, back in 90-whatever, 1990, I think, when Francis Ford Coppola's Bram Stoker's Dracula, possibly the longest title ever, short of... On, uh, I believe it's TNT one night, they showed three or four of the Christopher, Sir Christopher Lee Draculas, including this, Satanic Rites. And I especially went and bought one of those eight hour recording VHS tapes. <laughs> so, I mean, and I still have it. Um, here's that's something. crazy, dude. That's and, awesome. I used to, and they had little hosts, well, not necessarily host segments, but they had scenes with Francis Ford Coppola. And, you know, in my film, Dracula has three distinct forms. Talking about the, the wolf, the bat, and, and Dracula. Yeah. I called to you. Yeah, dude, he's- so he's basically just trying to resurrect him. Yeah. That's what I'm getting from it. I don't know. That's my first time watching, but that's what I'm getting. I always trying thought to... Him was trying to get Jessica. If you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, if if he got Dracula, that'd been great. But oh, and that uh, TNT with Francis Ford Coppola, the the music you hear. Every time they flash out to see show the earth, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, that was what they played the whole night. Mm. It's like the earth is breathing. The lovely Caroline Monroe. Yeah. Dude, she ever, looks badass. Oh, right she there. is beautiful. She was. She was supposed to be. Um, what's the vampire in the red bathing suit? Vampirella. Is that Vampirella? Oh. Vampirella yeah. she, Hammer was going to do Vampirella in the seventies. She was going to. And I keep pointing to my. That would have been amazing, dude. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, turn just a little bit here. <clears throat> and she was going to play it and play it and. Uh, Funding fell through. I'm like, God, she, she, she without I hate that, yeah. thinking comments about her anatomy, she would have been a perfect vampirella. <laughs> as you been. say that, I'm seeing the uh, the camera go down her as she's laying on the altar. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I mean, fucking, that would have been a perfect vampirella. There's there's three Hammer films that if I ever start sliding to different Earths. I want to look for... One is her and Vampirella. Uh-oh. He's, he's pulling up that <laughs> now. The second he one... Said she's... Go ahead, Trent. Oh, I was just laughing. It says you got to swear for the devil. I thought a ghost. Uh, you're on a square, ready to swear before the devil. <laughs> but I uh, see. Her is Vampirella. Peter Cushing doing um, Last Man on Earth, which they were going to call Night Creatures, <clears throat> which became the Vincent Price Last Man on Earth, the Italian one. Mm-hmm. They actually had um, Richard Matheson do a script spec. Whoa! <laughs> again, funding fell through. Ah. Uh. And there's uh, there was talk of a sequel to Captain Kronos, which I would have loved to have seen. I, the, the Captain Kronos is a kind of a weird film, but you know, yeah, you don't want to see the same stuff over and over. That's a really good. You know, once you kind of got maybe got bummed out watching the same old dragon, watch that one. Yeah, just there's some really interesting stuff in it, dude. I love how they're making the ground breathe, man. They're on the grave. Like, I was saying, it's like the earth. Yeah. 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 
breathing or is it trying to expunge Dracula? From yeah, him? yeah, contract. Yeah, like. Uh, uh, there we go. According to interviews, Carolyn Monroe says that blood was very cold. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, I I love Donald Pleasance as uh, as Sam Loomis, but mm-hmm. having Peter as that character would have been about, fucking amazing. What about Sir Christopher yeah. Lee? He says that's his yeah. biggest regret. Yeah, that would have been amazing as well. I mean, yeah. my my only thought would have been if you have Sir Christopher Lee playing Doctor Loomis. I don't want to see him with a gun. I want to see him go by and just start punching. I mean, mm-hmm. oh shit! Yeah, Dude, not, not only did they raise Dracula back, that like they broke the damn circle. You know, a black mass circle. They broke mm. it <laughs> without like you know proper, uh, yeah, proper like yeah, ceremonial shit. Yeah. Yeah, dude, she's amazing in this, Caroline Monroe. Still alive. She's on Facebook. That's oh, really? We'll, we'll try to add her on Instagram or Facebook, man. I get on Facebook more than Instagram. Yeah, me too. Uh, and you have to be a disciple of Dracula to pull the stake out. I mean, yeah. So you said that the guy that poured the ashes there, that was his ancestor, right? Yeah. Yeah. Played by the same actor, obviously. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Identical grandfathers that caught on TV tropes. Mm-hmm. It is my will. Uh-oh. I love it when he does that, Master, I summoned you. And then he just looks at it and he's like, it's my yeah. He pulls out the hand and he's got the ring on it. And Johnny looks down like, wait, how'd you do that? Yeah. Like, that Dracula. music, the reveal music too. Yeah. Oh. Uh-oh. Kiss the ring. <laughs> I always think that every time I see that. That's like, fucking he amazing. Did, yeah, I thought he was like, yeah, kiss the ring. But he didn't. No. Now, why she just sat there, I never have understood. <laughs> other than- <laughs> I mean, run, everybody else did. Those beautiful uh, teeth. Yeah, dude. Johnny likes to watch. I believe it was Sir Christopher who said he liked to do the, the bite scenes. Almost romantic to start like it's going in for a kiss. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Dude, he's fucking awesome, man. He, he was. Add in the fact Dude, you know, that was very synced. Uh, even though, like, whenever he drains and he, he puts his head back and his eyes are bloodshot, it's oh, like orgasmic, you know? Yeah, yeah. very. That, you know, that's, you know, oh, that's so beautiful. fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, sir? Sir Christopher Lee hunted Nazis in World War II. <laughs> Hell oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was part That's of something can... that uh, Winston Churchill started called the it was the Bureau of Ungentlemanly Warfare. 
Yeah. They were spies. Uh huh. That's all. Awesome. Nice. When uh. People, yeah, would, like, it. Like, people would ask him, you know, what you, know, what did you do in the war? And he would look, he would look at him and go, "Can you keep a secret?" And they'd be like, "Yeah." yeah. And then he'd look at him and go, "I can too." <laughs> yeah. Seriously, he couldn't talk about some of the stuff he'd done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fifty years That's later, amazing, dude. when uh, when he uh, when they were filming his death scene in Lord of the Rings. Uh, Return of the King. Story was yeah. Peter uh, 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 Peter Jackson looked at him and said, "You know, was telling him he said, no, just imagine what it sounds like when a man gets stabbed.'" And apparently, he looked at him and said, "I don't have to imagine what it sounds like when a man gets stabbed." <laughs> I've done it. I've been there yet. <laughs> Damn. That's the lady you were talking about that writes the kids' books now, right? Let me tell you, I wish I could remember where I read that or heard that. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to find some uh, some good information for you, and I couldn't find much of anything. I yeah. even put up little reference books and stuff. And... Have you all got to the kids playing soccer yet? No. Uh, just got style. a little bit of Jack of uh, Jack Hammer action. Yeah, yeah. Like tombstone with like just bricks and. Oh, and okay. Everything. Now kids. Yeah. Okay. I, my copy just seems to be running faster than, than your eyes. I, I hear dialogue or something like from one of your eyes. I'm like, ooh, I'm about like a minute ahead. Yeah. That's crazy, dude. Yeah. Uh, is yours ninety six minutes? Um, that's I get, really, but I think they have um, sped it up a little bit. Then, and, and uh, should we pause it and catch up with you? Or I, I'm pausing mine. No, I got to pause mine. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Okay, because Trent's watching it on HBO Max, which is probably the '96. Uh, Minute yeah. one because me and him yeah, are pretty much uh dead on, yeah. Yes, the 96 minute that's why I wanted to watch use my DVD, but my DVD I, I don't think I've ever used the DVD player on this computer. <laughs> <laughs> God, this just looks so good. I would love to see this remastered. I think I know what I'm going to be putting on my Christmas list now. A bunch of Dracula DVDs. There you go. Blu-rays. I, so, I, so I got I to gotta pick up... Uh, shit, what was the one? I'm, I'm, I'm missing the, the wall. The one that Butch was talking about earlier. I think it may have been before we went live. It's uh, not with Sir Christopher Lee. It was... Uh, the Legend of the, the Seven Golden Vampires? Yeah, I, I still have... I got to get that one. And then... Um, Taste of, taste of blood. Mm, no, no, I got taste of blood. What was the other one? Uh, about yeah, risen, name, right? risen from the grave. Yeah. Has risen from the grave. Yeah, I, yeah. that's uh, that's the only Christopher Lee one I don't have. Do you have uh, the one he made with Jess Franco? Yes, Count Dracula. Dracula. Yes, God, it looks like it was made on about five dollars budget. Now you said he was also he did one called Son of Dracula. Dracula and Son. Okay, I, I don't have that one. I don't even think that one's available anyway. Oh, oh on Blu-ray. Yeah, yeah, even a DVD probably would cost a lot of money. Some I've found some probably. shit like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, me. I think it's a a French or Italian. Is it? The, I believe the actual title is Dracula Pierre et Phil. Uh, I don't speak much. I, I want uh, my high school French is uh, rating me. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you hear me try to speak Russian, dude? (laughs) Just had a quick flash to Caroline here. Yeah. In Technicolor. Here we go, Trent. They're they're talking about Technicolor. Yeah. Look at that potion, how good it looks, man. Oh, it does look really good. The way they placed shit, man, and the 
this this time period. Yeah, it's like they cared back then because you know when we watched yeah. uh, Blood for Dracula, they cared about what was being seen on screen. Yeah, the red that we're talking about, the red. Yeah. Ah, oh, they had it popping, dude. All the red stuff. You know? The scene in uh, Blood for Dracula where uh, I believe Udo's in a white room, and I believe he's yeah. got shall we say, the wrong version, if you catch my drift there. And, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. running, and there's this white room right behind, and it's just like, you know, it's just, it just <laughs> out at you. And, and mm -hmm. Work of a maniac, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. And there we go. Here is uh, Inspector, what's his name? I left my notes upstairs. Sorry. So like, the I mean, he's thinking it's here. a serial killer. He's there, yeah. all the blood. Uh, this is also inspired by a this, uh, this vampire thing. Uh, Sussex, maybe the Sussex vampire, which I've read repeatedly about what happened, and I still don't quite understand it. This guy convinced his friends, and maybe not friends. That he was a vampire and there was some kind of ritual, um, blood sucking, and I don't understand it all. But apparently, this was kind of inspired by that. Also, and there's a little yeah. bit of uh, there's a little bit of Manson in here to me. You talking about how charismatic uh, mm -hmm. Johnny part is? Yeah, yeah, true, true. Yeah, I see that too. Yeah. Yeah. Michael Coles, who plays the uh, inspector, is one of the few character, few actors to play the same character twice in Hammer films. He plays him in, in this film, and then he plays him in the next one. Uh, ah. They start having some interesting stuff, and he's like, I know someone that can help us, and he goes back to Peter Cushing's Van Helsing. What's that weird thing on his desk? <laughs> I know it's it's weird. It's one of those things that you you had the ball the I yeah no I don't know no <laughs> <laughs> that's it's fucking weird man. Stirring his coffee with a pen. <laughs> See guys, that's how you have fucking uh, sicknesses going around. You can't do that. <laughs> Always makes me think of that shot of uh, Captain Kirk. He's kind of scratching his chin with his phaser, and it says, Captain Kirk, the only captain man enough to scratch his chin with a readied phaser. Let's see your precious John Luke Picard do that. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be some sort of mind teaser type thing. Yeah. That he has there. Because it looks like it has like some sort of pole hooked up to it. Yeah. And then you know the side. Yeah, I bet that's yeah. I bet that's what it is, dude. It's gotta be so, some sort of mon teaser. Or... Yeah. Maybe it's a Zen thing where like you follow it and it's supposed to like Yeah. Yeah. And... Must have been I a seventies thing. Stuff like that. Yeah. The, if a tree falls in a forest, does it make sense? Well, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever reason, never worked to me. Of course it does. Every tree that I make, you know, I, I miss the point. Anyone that knows me that's watching this is go probably just going, yeah, lots of times. <laughs> Do we got anybody in the room yet? Uh, there's no uh, no one watching right now. Oh, no. These are We're having fun. <laughs> yeah. I love that line. He says they were uh, they were stoned when they recorded this, and she says, "Weren't they all?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, she pulls out a big old fatty here. Oh, oh my God! The thing oh, is, man, yeah. What kind of all, water is all that, egg, dude? Yeah. I like to think that's Pink Floyd that they're listening to. Yeah.
This is a good movie, man. Like it, it does. It drags a little bit. Like I said earlier, it drags a little bit at the beginning. But once Sir Christopher Lee shows up, once Dracula's here, yeah, like, okay, you know, it's on. It, yeah, it it it, it, does, it introduces. But in my mind, it introduces you to the characters. You get to know them a little bit. It's not twenty minutes with assholes like in say Cloverfield or, or yeah. Films where it's like, oh God, can you hurry up, show up, and kill all these people? Yeah. I would love if I could have one thing from a hammer film, well, maybe not this one thing, but I would love to have that picture of Sir Chris Philly's Dracula hanging on his wall. Oh, oh yeah, amazing. that's really awesome looking, man. Yeah. Or, or the ring, or a cape, or a cape, but you know. Yeah. I mean, I am glad that they, they brought him into present age with Christopher Lee. You know, because that, that is really cool. I mean, because I understand, you know, you know the the whole Dracula thing and having it set back, and you know, you know, Gothic times, Victorian times, or whatever. Yeah. But I mean, jeez. I love. I love. If you're not going to do something with that after you introduce him into Gothic times, mm -hmm. you have to do something. Yeah. Yeah. Tell, in my mind. You can't tell the same story over and over and over unless you're making a James Bond film, of course. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so, yeah, I mean, I, I plus you're saving money by not having all these you know, horses and carriages, exactly, and exactly, and yeah. outfits and and whatnot. Yeah, of the past, yeah, like Victorian outfits and shit. Let alone, you know, then you got to build uh, a how you know the interior of houses and whatnot. And, mm -hmm. know, yeah, make them look that. Victorian, Gothic. Yeah, dude. Yeah, here you. Didn't John Carpenter do a Dracula? I'm thinking like John Carpenter stuff. Dracula yeah, in the nineties or something. He said vampires. Oh not, yeah, not okay. Dracula. Oh, yeah, though. yeah. John Carpenter's okay. vampires. My bad. With yeah, uh, James okay. Woods. Yeah. 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 And, and cool. Elvis from Son of Anarchy's in that. Yeah, Bobby Elvis. Yeah. People yeah. say I look like Bobby Elvis, man. Like I'm like, I I can see it a little, but you know. <laughs> But yeah, like that was a good movie. Uh, well, I, I I did not like it the first time I watched it because I mean, put yourself in the time. Trent, you know it very well. We were there together. We were in the '90s. We were listening to Systems of Mercy, Topo yeah. Negative. You know, we were we wanted our vampires moody, and and you know, then vampires came out, and it was like it was definitely it was that that wasn't yeah. the vampires I was looking at. We were playing Vampire the Masquerade, you know, uh, yeah. of that. But uh, you oh, yeah. know. Mystique. Yeah. I, I, I later went back and watched it and realized I was a fucking idiot because the fucking movie yeah. fucking rocks. It's fucking yeah. good. It is a good movie. Nevertheless, yeah. even if John, uh, I mean, even if uh, James Woods, <laughs> a crazy bastard. But he does a good <laughs> job in it, which is what surprised me. I'm he like, does. He does. I mean, he is a car, code hard man doing a code hard job. And yeah. it's based on a novel called Vampires, with the S being a dollar sign. I believe his name's Streaky or Streaky, which yeah. I read. That doesn't have a whole lot to do with the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Other than they work for the Vatican and they go around killing vampires, and they they hit this nest and uh, they think they kill everybody, but they don't kill the master. The master comes after them, slaughters them, and then it's uh, James Woods' character. His name is escaping me. Rebuilding his kid. Yeah. So but, that's uh, what the the book's about, then. A lot more, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I picked that up at McKay's. I've I've yet to uh, to read it, but I did pick that up. Oh, I need to take a trip. I need to take a trip down there. I ain't been there in a while. I need to go and just look, see what all I got in the horror and the martial arts and all that stuff, westerns. I haven't gone to McKay's in so long because in the books, every time I went, it was the same old stuff. Yeah. And it, 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 
I think the problem is, is Knoxville has a lot of people that are kind of like-minded. And there are people that have a lot more time than us that can go and 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 get those drops. Because I've seen people, like, yeah. as a matter of fact, someone just put up uh, a picture in a group I'm in uh, where they got dead alive from there. I mean, oh, wow. you can, it's there. It's just you got to be there when it fucking comes in. Yeah, I got yeah. fucking I got the Dawn of the Dead um, uh, original Blu-ray from there. When, whenever yeah. it was so fucking hard to get, yeah. you know, it was actually it was it was wrote up like it was the uh, the remake. <laughs> yeah. Somebody, and I paid yeah. for like five bucks for it, you know. Somebody and at the same time, if you want to go get it on eBay, it's like it was like goddamn ninety dollars or something. Right. Yeah. Somebody keeps the damn uh, video games in the metal city like just wiped out. Mm-hmm. Somebody has to know somebody inside or some shit because I don't know. Like, yeah, they, they, know there's a couple of Alice Cooper CDs I've been I, I go there for and Black yeah. Sabbath and you know I it, w- one day I might find it, but you know I, I, right now I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking I might hit the Chattanooga one on the way down for Thanksgiving, man. Like, do it, that. do yeah, it. Yeah, even though. Uh, Insane hit uh, the Chattanooga uh, McKay's um, in. I forgot what she grabbed. She did. She did find some epics, which Marvel epics is something I'm into. A couple, yeah. like Spider Man and uh, a Doctor yeah. Strange and uh, the X Men stuff. Uh, yeah. I've been trying to grab up those epics, but. Yeah. Uh, Horror movie wise, book wise, didn't really didn't really score. No, and yeah. metal, but there was no metal there that Man. I was in Deaton. I got a uh, shit. What's Chris Barnes's band? Uh, six feet under. See, I got a cool six feet under CD there. Last time I was there, but nice. And uh, some other couple other things, but oh, yeah. Johnny's licking uh, the oh, yeah. uh, children's uh, book lady. Yeah. yeah. That's the last time, yes. Some of the outfits, like what Jessica's wearing right now, that little yeah. bonnet. Yeah. That's horrible. <laughs> yeah, not hey, hey, bonnet, dude. Made your granddaughter cry. <laughs> I don't believe now. Yeah, it looks very, yeah. I don't know, kind of Amish, I guess. Kind of. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I could definitely feel the Amishness. I do kind of like the inspector's coat there. Uh, not something I would, I would want to wear every day, but mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it's really British. I like that too. Like the pinstripe, like, is it pinstripe or no? But it's just no, I don't think it's yeah. pinstripe. It's definitely striped, but it's really British. Oh, but like dude, it. that's what that's some shit that uh, uh, producer Jamie. Dude, look at the coat. It's something yeah. that producer Jamie would wear to Prosper Wrestling in Alabama when we'd go yeah. fresh as pro- uh, yeah. the, You remember that shit? We would go I in do. there. We'd fucking cheer for the fucking hills. Uh, producer yeah. Jamie would be wearing her fur fucking. They thought, yeah, they thought we were like uh, the flock, something kind of like the flock. At yeah. WCW. They thought we were going to get up. Like, the oh, hills yeah. would come out and we're like, and they were like, yes. And, you know, all these rednecks yeah. around us like fucking yeah, they, they want to kill us. Something- yeah, <laughs> dude, I'm seeing a lot of the old WCW coming out. Speaking of wrestling in the AEW, man, like they're bringing. Oh, well, I've seen, I've seen it too. I t- yeah, crazy. Bischoff, he's with them now, and like he's telling them what, like I guess succeeded in uh, in WCW and what failed, and like you know, so they're they're kind of incorporating a lot of that in there, you know. God, I love Peter's voice. Yeah. That's really cool. He was the second uh, re- movie actor recognition. Of course, you know, I saw um, Star Wars, the original, which is yeah. episode four. I will not use the abominable title, but I will call it episode four. <laughs> yeah. I'm. I got a picture of Peter at his desk, and you'll see his wife there on the right hand side. You may not be yeah. there, just yet. <clears throat> but you, uh, uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was gonna, so you know, I knew Peter Cushing as Grandma Sharkin, and used mm-hmm. to 
back in the late 70s, early 80s, WATE, Channel 6 here, from 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock would show movies. And they would have various themes. Well, one was um, uh, not Frankenstein must be destroyed. Uh, I can't remember the title right now. But I was I was watching it and I kept I was like, oh my god, that's Grand Moff Tarkin. And, uh, <laughs> I thought he was so cool. Yeah. You know? Did you get Did you get to see New Hope in the theaters when it came yep. out? Or? Yeah. Oh, cool. I was old enough to see Empire Strikes Back, but I didn't get to see New Hope. I was only a year when that came out. That, year that, old. that was me. I uh, I was uh, Empire definitely. Uh, I saw I saw uh, I saw uh, episode four uh, in a drive-in. Yeah. Uh, near when the uh, Empire was coming out. Yeah. I saw. Uh, yeah, Empire was the first, and then Return of the Jedi I saw, too. Uh, don't know that I ever seen New Hope yeah, in, in theaters. I yeah. wish I had, man. I mean, I saw, and then I saw the remastered that came out in 90. Yeah. 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 Uh, me, me and uh, producer Jamie uh, we were going to see all those when they came out. I don't think we saw the first one because I don't think we were together yet. But yeah. we did see the other ones. Um, I think ninety six is when Empire came out. Maybe Empire. I think I want to say eighty. No, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean the the remake, uh, or not the remake, oh. but the uh, oh, remake, uh, the reissue. Yeah, sure about, yeah. Are you uh, have you got to the point where uh, Jessica is writhing in the bed? As she's apparently experiencing what the um, child yeah, birth. Yeah. 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 That's why I think that's a wig that she had on it, has on her, or, or, or something. Because uh, her hair looks so Oh, beautiful. yeah. It looks wild right there. I mean, um, dude. That was, a, that was a bad bite right there, man. <laughs> What I find, go ahead, Butch. I was gonna say what I find interesting is um, Dracula drains both uh, Carolyn Monroe and the future child author. Um, yeah, I mean they're they're both kind of pale, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, she's pale as torn, man. I just kept thinking, man, yeah, that's a wasted opportunity there. Why, why, would, why wouldn't you turn them? You don't mm -hmm. have to make them right, but yeah, he's he just drains them. He doesn't like turn them, does he? Because yeah. uh, there's a point here, right here, where uh, on mine, Johnny is whining. Uh, I need the power. I need the power. <laughs> and then that great scene where Sir Christopher turns around, you. Yeah. It's like. No, sir. Whatever you say, sir. Oh, over here we've got him. I, Master, I did it. I released you. And now he's demanding the power. Yeah. So, Trent, we were talking about Polanski the other day. You know, he yeah. had a vampire movie. Yeah. The Fearless, Fearless vampire, vampire, vampire Killers. Yeah, and, dude. So we, we should uh, we should watch that sometime. We should definitely watch that. I've never seen that one either. I haven't seen a lot of Polanski movies, man, which is crazy, you know. I mean, I've heard all this hot. I mean, I need to watch more of his stuff because I've heard like he's brilliant, crazy as hell, but brilliant, you know. But well, I'll say this for Roman Polanski: if you go through what he went through with yeah. Sharon and all that, yeah. If you don't turn a little crazy, there's something wrong. You yeah, got that, Sharon's yeah. in this movie too. Really? Yeah. 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 That might yeah, be the first either way they did or the only one they made together. Or there's something about that I remember. I don't know. I don't know. That's fascinating, man. That whole thing, you know, the whole helter skelter shit. And like, yeah. hey guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump off real quick to use the yeah. restroom. Yeah, I'll I think I got, right two, I got two as well, man. Okay, I'll well, you can go there. ahead and uh, go ahead. We'll do it in shifts. That way, two of us are uh, are on here. Okay. I'm gonna hit stop cam and okay. There we go. Okay. 
So, but so he did drain him and make him because he did. He didn't. He, no, he didn't drain him. He bit him. Okay, he so he did. He didn't. Okay, okay. I, I can overlook Caroline Monroe. You know, it's been a hundred hundred years allegedly. So you know, he's hungry. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But still, it's just like you, he he goes on Johnny. You know, Johnny wants he wants Johnny to get Jessica Van Helsing for him. He, that is his goal. Well, turn her female friends. You're like, oh Jessica, you need to come with me. Blah blah blah. But I don't know. I... So it, it, there's a there's a sci-fi show where there's a female Van Helsing, right? Oh. Uh... Um, I believe so. I think it's on Netflix. I've not watched it. I haven't either. I've, I've, I've wanted to. The little scene, the scene here where Johnny's sitting in his car and the chick walks mm -hmm. by and he start coming out. I, I just, it always makes me think of an erection. It's like his <laughs> Yeah, like, I can see that. Come here, baby. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. Nope, I can't go. Thought we was gonna have a special guest here, but she ran off. <laughs> Gotta get that holy water. That's one thing I you know. I love I love vampires and I always have and probably always will. But another thing I love is a motherfucking vampire slayer. I fucking love Van Helsing. I love I love that thing too. You, you got the bad, but you got to have the the, yeah. the the good there too. When uh, when Devil's Rejects came out, my friend that that teaches at uh, Web School. He was telling me he had a conversation with the students there about it. And um, my favorite character in Devil's Rejects is Sheriff Wandell. Because he's badass. Mm -hmm. he, he even said, there's a point where he says, it talks about being a monster. He comes from a line of monster hunters. Mm -hmm. but that's what you need, hunting monsters. Yeah. Now, of course, Peter Cushing, Van Helsing, is kind of the, the flip side of that. But he's mm -hmm. not chasing. He's chasing mystical creatures who are bound, you know, with garlic and the cross and holy water. The Firefly family are psychos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And, you know, if you kind of use a D and D term, they're, they're pretty high level. You ain't going to walk in with a couple of first or fifth levels and take them down. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, that to me, that's, that's, that's a, that's a character if it's done right. I love is the monster hunter. Yeah, yeah. Fuck it, I'm with you, man. Could be a monster. You know, I I was watching the part of Devil's Rejects not that long ago, and there's this the scene where the the uh, critic comes in and he speaks ill of Elvis because uh, Groucho Marx died and then Elvis died and and. Like Sheriff Wandell is just, he goes off on me. You ever speak ill of the king? I will, you know, and he just throws off this whole thing. <laughs> and it's a nice touch to remind you that this takes place in the late 70s, but also that, but that would not, you know, fly nowadays. You, you can't just go around, you know, police just can't go around threatening. My back's hurting me. I got to sit up a little bit. So pardon my roof. Oh, you're good. Uh, you can't go around threatening like that. Uh -huh. but he's the perfect guy to go after the Firefly family. Just like Peter Cushing's Van Helsing is the perfect guy to go after Sir Christopher Lee's Dracula. I don't think you could flip them and they could do the other. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. And every time I see him light up a cigarette, it... it ugh. Knowing he died of lung cancer. It's like, uh, mm. 
he died, let's see, I think it was in 93, the day before my birthday. Damn. So it was just like... So um, 93, that, that's when... Uh, that's when uh friend friend uh, that's when the other dry clay came out or, or wasn't it uh, uh for, for, yeah i think, I think that, that, that or 92 92 93 I, I i was in college at Rhone state now i didn't go to college straight from high school i think a couple of years off because i was really burnt out here i'll look it up real quick I'm pretty sure it was 92, 93, or maybe 93, 94. November because 92. 92? Yep. Actually, because November 13th, it, which would be tomorrow. Because we're having all these. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what's odd about that is I always, always in, in my mind, I always think, well, um, uh, Jason Goes to Hell was my first R-rated movie I seen in the theater, but it wasn't because I saw Dracula uh, in the theater, which happened the year before. Because because I was in ninety two, yeah, and in ninety three. Uh, so I mean Dracula, but but then again, I didn't really watch Dracula onto the theater to see it because I, I was on a date and I just kissed the whole date. <laughs> so didn't even really pay attention to the movie. So yeah, technically yes. Uh, uh, Jason goes to hell is still my uh, first R-rated theater uh, theatrical <laughs> experience. <laughs> my first in uh, the- theater was. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. As I say, I'm gonna show my age. The first R-rated movie I saw in the theater was Trading Places with Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd. Oh yeah, <laughs> mine was. Uh, mine was uh, Good Morning Vietnam. Robin Williams like. Uh, uh-huh. I bought a ticket to see uh, Overboard with Goldie Hawn because you couldn't, you had to be 17. I bought that and snuck in to see uh, Good Morning Vietnam. I fucking <laughs> love it. Good Morning Vietnam, dude. Yeah, it was a good it's movie. So fucking man. good. All right. Yeah. I'm taking a pee real quick. Okay. Right. We'll be here. Did uh, did you pause your trip or are you, were you still no, going? It's, it's still going. Okay. Well, mine right now, Peter Cushing is talking to the inspector in the office. Yeah, that's right where I'm at, too, okay. as a distraction. Yeah. Pot and LSD, said. Yeah, I'm with Doug. I, Peter Cushing's voice. I mean, of course, Sir Christopher Lee. Yeah, it's you know. very romantic, very uh, soothing like voice. You know? A lot of my favorite actors... Um, one of the reasons I like them is their voice. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm getting oh, ready. To yeah. Somebody, I'm, I'm I'm talking about his acting, not his political stuff. Charlton Heston. Yeah. Man oh, has yeah. a. Voice. He does, yeah. Charlton um, Heston's got a beautiful voice. And and every time, like if I watch Planet of the Apes, and he, damn you, what the hell? Yeah. He <laughs> tells that so well. Yeah. Um, I like. Uh, I know he's been in some shit recently. Too. Matthew McConaughey, his voice is real cool. I like it. Uh, it's not real soft, but it's just cool. And he's been in some shit lately because of what he said about the vax and stuff. But yeah, he he's got a good voice. I miss that. He what, first movie I saw him in was uh, Contact with Jodie Foster. Yeah, and I was like, God, I hate your fake Southern accent. Stop doing it. <laughs> yeah. Being from the South, you you, you know this. A lot of actors can't do a good southern accent. Yeah. Yeah, he had that dazed and confused too, that fake southern accent. Going. But I hadn't seen that yet. But yeah, yeah. Like that. Um, and Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. Why are you talking so? I was just like, oh my God, will you shut up? <laughs> and stop that horrible accent. And then I see him yeah. in an interview. Like, oh my God, he really does talk like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's funny, man. He was uh, an interesting choice to play. Uh, I forget what his name is. Randall Flagg in the Gunslinger film. Yeah, yeah. yeah he was interesting. That was crazy. Was that gonna take, there was a lot of other actors that could have done it, you know, but that was an interesting. 
he needs to be Randall Flag, Dracula, the Devil. If you're putting them in a film as a character, yeah, he needs to be handsome. To you know to to, to <laughs> have his little in with the the ladies, you know. Yeah. And, but he also needs to have kind of a manly quality, you know, like a like a. Yeah, but you guys think it's somebody maybe like Keanu Reeves might have been good, or I don't know, maybe somebody a little younger than that. I don't know. I'm not really up on the young actors, but. <laughs> <laughs> When I was reading The Gunslinger in the late, or excuse me, in the early 90s when I was in college, yeah. how, I could, how I could read a book, go to college full time, and work full time, me now can't understand. Oh, I know, yeah. I get tired but, easy now, yeah. But uh, I, reading, uh, reading <laughs> The Gunslinger, I kept seeing Sean Connery as Randall. Sean Connery would have been a good Sean one. Sean Connery from yeah. about. Um, um, Hunt for Red October, yeah, uh, and 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 the uh, the movie he won the Oscar for the, uh, the gangster film, yeah. The Chicago, the twenty years from the hospital. You should twenty years from the hospital. You should twenty years from the. Uh, can't think of the name of that film, but Sean Connery around then, but even would have been good. Yeah, shit. I was thinking like maybe like Keanu from Keanu Reeves from like uh, Johnny Mnemonic and. Uh, Maybe that era, you know. Uh, who would you got to play Randall Flag in the film, Doug? Like, you, in the uh, the Gunslinger. made for TV. Oh, oh, oh! I thought we were talking about the stand. No, the Gunslinger. <laughs> Gunslinger. Stuff. I think it was Walter of Dimsdale. Is that his name in in the uh, Gunslinger? I don't, yeah. But like a. Uh, he could have done. I think he could have done a good fight if he, did, you know, did the put put time into it. You know, I just had an interesting thought. Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> oh wow, that would have been crazy. That would have been crazy. It, oh, look at how they did the cross burn in her hand, guys. Yeah. Yep. Uh oh, boyfriend's been turned. Yeah. I don't want to, to disappoint the horror buddies fans out there that are going to ultimately be watching this on uh, on demand. Um, so oh. I'm going to let you guys know that uh, while I'm watching this fine film, I uh, have uh, a little snack here. Uh -oh. I've got a I've got uh, some pizza, and yeah, just to keep I the vampires away today. Garlic. I have made sure to get me some garlic butter. Yeah. You know, you never know when they're going to come for the neck. And uh, all you got to do is, you know. Yep. That's what I'm going to have, uh, uh, California pizza. Ooh, some California pizza. Yeah, I don't, put garlic salt on it. I don't have any food, but, but I do have something in case the vampires show up. Yeah, I got one of those uh, barbecue chicken uh, with the uh, onions on it and stuff. And put a little garlic <laughs> salt on it. Keep the vampire. Oh, shit. Nice. We found Hell, this yeah. uh, Home Depot. Where'd you get that fucker at, dude? That's cool. Home Depot. Oh, wow. Well, Jill found it, my wife, and uh, yeah. I was like, oh, my God, if Jason had had this, he would have killed everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like three Friday the Thirteenth films because after that's that, one of big that's one of big Connor swords, dude. You know? <laughs> big Connor machete. Apparently, this um, um, bar that that they got grabbed Jessica from the in. Uh, Peter's now looking through. Yeah. Apparently it's a coffee bar. But I never saw them drinking coffee, but okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> now, what is, is he's running around Chelsea here. Watch some of the background people who I don't think have any idea what's going on. Oh, man. I love her toboggan, dude. Look. 
I love hats like that, man. Yeah, yeah. I just saw somebody just randomly just walking by in the background. Set. <laughs> Trent, I remember you used to have a um, uh, a little beanie like that. It had the sunshine. Um, remember yeah, that one? My, yeah, my friend made it for me, man. Um, yeah, she made it for me. I got one now, kind of like hers that my dad wore. Uh, it's an orange like that. Yeah, I, I, I think I still got that somewhere, man. I love that hat. The sun with the sun on it. Mm -hmm. Had little fish hooks on it. Now that music, that sounds like we're watching this fucking Debbie Does Dallas. It totally does, man. Yeah, I'm digging the score on this, man. I want, I want to see some love making inside a coffin. Yeah. You're not going to see it here, buddy. I just want to tell you. <laughs> You're about to see ass kicking near a coffin. Yeah. <laughs> and this, you know, this scene that we're, you're seeing where, with uh, Ben Helsing and Johnny. <clears throat> Van Helsing isn't an action hero in this film. Uh, but man, he's smart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. think, think about think about a regular human being going up against a vampire. Oh, I know. You got to be smart, man. You got to have it. Yeah. Oh, she's gonna get the bride away. Here comes the one to get down to get down to get down to get Yeah. Yep. I love get that music. There. There. It's almost like the same music they had in Chips, man. Dude, the cop show, you know? Yep. Yeah. Kind of like that. If you know, look, yeah, okay. Well. Use his brain. <laughs> keep him away. Yeah. Now, what, what's Johnny going to do? Can't use that. That's, man. Yeah. that's interesting that that yes. you know throwing it in his coffin will uh, fuck him up like that. Yeah. Well, think about it take though. It out. Please take them out. Even go back to Bay of Ghosty, there was always multiple coffins. That's why, in case they got to the one. Yeah. I guess you're right. Oh shit. He don't like that, dude. But now here's an here's a here's a real realism thought. That reflected sunlight is affecting him, right? Mm -hmm. What is moonlight? Reflected sunlight. Ah, yeah, ah, true. True that, yeah. And, and it is cliche, I guess maybe cliche is Johnny's death right here is it's kind of cool too. It's something that a new vampire would do, you know? Yeah. He pulls that down and he like falls into the tub and the running water. I mean, you get all of the vampire other than being staked, you get pretty much all the vampire uh, weaknesses there. Yeah, he's a newbie. Kind of like Evil Ed, you know? In uh, Friday yeah. Night. Yeah, who I wished had been in Friday Night too. Yeah, me too. We were talking about, yeah. He wanted to be in... Uh, he wanted seven, to be in... Evil. Yeah. Tom Holland still has an idea. Friday Night Resurrection. Isn't that what they're calling it? He's calling it? And so, uh, yeah. it will bring back uh, Evil Ebb. Yeah. Oh, that'd be, that'd be cool, man. Are you talking the original Evil Ed from the original Fright Night, or is there a new one in the remake? Because I've not seen the remake. No, it, it, Tom Holland uh, talking about it, so it will be the original Evil Ed.
And they were going they to it. totally disregard the uh, the awesome, amazing second uh, Friday night. Which, if you guys are uh, around next weekend, I hear the buddies will have an episode dropping. Yeah, for Friday night too. Yeah, I have not seen that since it dropped. Since it no dropped since it came out on VHS and I rented it one weekend. God, I love it. It's it been a while since I've seen it, man. Uh, the chick. Yeah, we should, we should do nine seven six evil sometime too, man. That'd be hey, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I know there's a sequel to nine seven six evil two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The only thing I can remember about it is there's this amazingly hot redhead who's a lawyer, and like she pisses off the bad guy, and like something start starts happening to her car and she's like beating and she gets in a car crash. That's all I remember about the film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it's time for me. I need to doing? watch it again. So I, got, I got it on uh I think just yeah just DVD not Blu-ray. I found it at McKay's. It's like yeah I gotta snatch this. Oh look the double bus dude the what do they call it double decker bus. Yep. Um I'll tell you another. I think we're getting a little echo here. Let me let me turn that down a little bit. Yeah. Uh, another Dracula that that I like, uh, very underrated, is Miles O'Keefe from um, Waxworks. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. But um, if you've never seen Waxworks, I, I recommend it. Yeah, I think I've seen Wax Works. I can't remember. Uh oh, what happened to boyfriend here? Mm. Oh, there we go. Two pokes yeah. in there. <laughs> Couldn't get in the coffin. He talks kind of the same as Star Wars as he does here, man. Uh, Peter Cushing does. He does. <laughs> We're talking about his voice, how cool it is. Mm-hmm. And we're about to finally have the two leads. And for me, this that when you have Cushing and Lee on screen going mm-hmm. back and forth. That, that's what this anything else that's interesting uh, or maybe yeah. even not interesting or whatever, that's that's what it's all. So that, this is what I'm here for. Yeah, exactly. And notice yeah. early, also earlier in the film, her hair was kind of platinum blonde and now it's kind of yellow blonde. Mm, yeah. True. wonder why that is. Because I think she's wearing a wig. Different really. wig. Oh, yeah, excited about different her wig, yeah. I seen her hair a little shorter here too. Yeah. Might have been a reshoot. A bad. That's what. Yeah. Oh, he's got his stakes. My echo and does. I uh, I don't hear echo. Okay, all right. I thought I heard a little echo of mine. I think I was. Uh, I turned my sound down. Yeah, I got my gain all the way down. He's getting ready. Mm-hmm. The Raiders of North Wind. Oh, that church, dude. Look at that. That's beautiful. St. Bartox is the name in the film. Yeah. This film kind of hints at uh, him having some kind of mystic abilities, you know, uh, telepathy, mind control. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. A couple of things, a couple of double D's there. 
Here we go. Uh oh. Look on me, Dracula. And remember. That's a classic line right there. Look on me, Dracula, and remember. It's just me, or does he look like the Joker there? He does, sort of. I can see that, dude. It's one thing they've always, I thought they've always missed with the Joker is the Joker's supposed to be tall and thin. Mm hmm. Yeah. Let's say everybody oh, he, would, he would have been a great Joker, man. I think he would have been. <clears throat> dun, 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 dun. Keep turning mine down so I can hear. Um, the chase. Yeah. The <laughs> there. And some great soundtrack there. Yeah. You guys are right. You really can't beat the 70s as far as the soundtrack style like this, man. Well, I think there's good soundtracks in every decade. Yeah. Uh, but there's this... For me, the 70s had a lot of taking chances, if you will. Do, do, yeah, 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 experimenting and shit. Good mix. This kind of yeah. funky seventies with British dignity, but it works. Yeah, like just having fun with stuff, but also like Dob said, just like like caring, you know, about the, but having fun with it too, you know. Then at the same time, you had the eighties. Yeah, the 80s those too. fucking nice metal. synth soundtracks. Yeah, synth and metal. so so you also had in the eighties, you had uh, Friday Thirteenth Part Three. Was yeah. brought the di disco uh, soundtrack in. True, true, yeah. And then you had the Nightmare on Elm Streets with the metal stuff, and you know, the rock stuff. You know, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say metal, but rock, like Dokken and uh, Vinnie Vincent. Yeah, Vinnie Vincent. So I mean, yeah, you've always had good soundtracks. It's just for me, the seventies had a lot of, of uh, stuff that. If they just tried different things. It wasn't. Yeah. So that has to hurt. Yeah, totally. So it's modern the vampire's face. I wish they would go back to having like rock soundtracks, you know, like they did in the eighties and nineties. And that well, Halloween cool. Kills Halloween. gave us uh, ghost, gave us a yeah. ghost song. <laughs> yeah, go Hunter's Moon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe that'll maybe it'll pick that'll pick help pick stuff up with that, you know. That'd be really cool. Yeah, I love the Hunter's Moon and the, and the Howling Kills, man. Oh, Yeah, her hair is just all fucked up at the end of this movie. It's yeah. just like... Van Helsing is so badass, he defeats Dracula with one arm. <laughs> Holy crap, yeah. Ooh. Nice. Good filming there, yeah. Good. Oh, man. He's melting, disintegrating. The blood splatter from uh, the state coming through that. Yeah. Oh, that was beautiful. And it has to make my favorite kill, man. You know, because <laughs> that's not a sound that man should make. Yeah. Oh man. Poor Dracula, man. Poor Stephanie's falling out of that dress. Yeah. My Latin's kind of sketchy, but I always thought that it says uh, "restium uh, in pas ultima." I thought it was "rest in ultimate peace," but as it tells rest you, right, peace forever. Final peace. 
Final piece, okay, yeah. Just in final piece, okay, yeah. Bob, that was the boyfriend's name, Bob. Look at that, Bob. Okay, I think I just oh, saw uh, the part with the uh, the breasticles almost falling out. <laughs> yeah. Just got hold them boy. for you, babe. And pass, pass that. And you see oh, shit. where she's laying like on the altar. Shit too, man. See where she's laying on the altar, and he's he's putting trying to put the cross around her neck, and it's like he's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Such a good one, man. Such a yeah, good movie. That's badass. I enjoyed that, man. I really liked it. Yeah. It, uh, it, it, apparently, it didn't do well. I mean, it apparently did okay because you know, it got another sequel. You know, kind of like yeah. you know, we'll finally kill Jason or Freddy or whoever. Uh, bad, yeah. bad money. <laughs> you know, not making enough money. Um, I I don't understand why this film gets the hate it does. Um, and and I'm glad to say I've seen on various websites, you know, that it, people are starting to finally come around. Yeah. To the you know the, to appreciate for what it is. And it's probably the whole modern day setting that people are so grumpy about. I, I mean, like honestly, I, yeah. I mean, I did I like, too. I really like, I like it. A good, I like a good change up, like you know, I like the old stuff too in the Victorian, but I like a good change up, and I I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed it thoroughly through and through. You know. So yeah, I watched the uh, I watched the Blu-ray here. And uh, the only thing besides it, besides it looking beautiful, and, and, and trust me, it looked really good. Um, the only extra I'm getting is um, I get the uh, the trailer. Yeah, yours probably looked well. Yours and Butch's both probably looked a lot better than mine, like on HBO Max. Uh, no, yeah, actually, even on, I, I watched a little bit on HBO Max. It looks really good on HBO Max. Yeah, it, 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 it probably yeah. it probably looked as good as this Blu-ray, depending yeah, on really, you know. Mine doesn't really say anything up. about it. A trailer. There's no there's no special features uh, on these. It really was beautiful directing, like that one scene where the table with a pink potion. And they illuminated the girl's hair of uh, the storybook writer lady now. I came uh, mm -hmm. her hair was illuminated in pink. I mean, I just yeah, I love that. The whole we were talking about that, and I, that that scene was really good. And, uh, a lot of care went into making it, it seems like, you know. Yeah. Um I enjoyed it thoroughly. I wish I wish someone like Scream Factory would get a hold of this one because I mean this is just a Warner Archives yeah. uh, Blu-ray. And I know Scream Factory, uh, you know, they, they, they put some love into the uh, the couple of different uh, um, Hammer uh, movies I have from them. They really do. Uh, they put love in everything they do. Uh, I mean, yeah, I've never seen a Scream Factory that I hated. I can't, I, I can say. Even, even films I'm not interested in, um, I look at the, stu the special features and, and stuff and, uh, you know, I, I was trying. I was contemplating pulling the trigger on the um, uh, the new Halloween specials that they had come out around Christmas. Or around Christmas, around Halloween. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, the main reason I didn't is, well, I mean, I have them all. I'm not that big of a Halloween fan, uh, but the, all the special features really kind of got me. But I don't have yeah. a four K, <clears throat> and I, they were all like forty bucks, which. I'm an adult. I have oh, bills, yeah. unfortunately. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I did. I did. I did grab the original. Uh, grabbed it, um, and I grabbed five, which I I'm not the biggest fan of Halloween five. Period. I mean, I enjoy, and you know, I know I've I've said this before, but I enjoyed Resurrection more than I do Halloween five. But the reason I bought five is because it does have the uh, the Doctor Death scene in it. Uh, and no, I'm not talking about Steve Williams, Trent. 
<laughs> but that, that's why i ended up uh ended up purchasing and, and you know I, I did get them on sale they're like 20 it was 20 24 bucks uh each uh i would like to get two three and four um because i mean honestly two i'm pissed off at both of the versions of two i have because there ain't, there's no god dang sir subtitles i know we had that <laughs> we did the, the car buddies we had that problem there was a halloween 2 set that released also with a a, a film called terror in the isles oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah i remember terror in the isles yeah and the documentary yeah go well, on it's more just a clip show like is you know you think you're safe at home you think you're safe in the shower like they might show something from um psycho, psycho. or you yeah. know stuff like that I, I saw that oh my god it had that red white well it had a black cover with red and like a like page reading on it man i remember yeah i saw it like way a long time ago i saw it my grandmother uh well my my mother's mother she passed away in 83. Mm -hmm. and I remember watching it at her house because she had a literal, literal cable box where you had to go in and punch a little dial for each channel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's actually how I saw it. Good old days. Uh, I, I don't know if it's HBO, but they were showing it and it was a bunch of clips. Dude, I don't yeah. Pleasance and this woman talking you know, introducing each little clip and, and stuff. Uh, I don't think there was like a coherent storyline. It was more just, here's something to, you know, what's that? You're hungry. Oh, well, you know, here comes the blob, the stuff, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, there, I, I, I think my favorite uh, kill of this movie is just the, the view of after, uh, after, uh, uh Dracula takes on um the uh the children's book writer just that scene where after it's all said and done and he's walking away and she's like lying there like all pale that that was beautiful just yeah, ju yeah just the scene of that was that, that takes it for me just because it was just beautiful was, Everything man. from the makeup that they used in the, the fucking shot, in the you know, you, you had yeah. Sir Christopher Lee just walking away. And, and I enjoyed her in it too. I want, I want to find out her name because I really enjoyed her her in the movie. I want to say it's Marsha something. Yeah, um, Marsha. My favorite kill would probably have to be the end where you know he's disintegrating and melting. I really thought they did that very well. I want to say Marsha Hunt, but I don't have it with me here. Marsha Hunt. Now, is that the, the person? Was she also in Howling too? Because there was Marcia somebody. Hunt. There was somebody in this movie besides Christopher Lee that was in the Howling too, which I think Christopher Lee has went on to apologize for being in that. But I fucking love that movie. God damn, I love it. Or did, or, or did he apologize for Gremlins too? He probably should have apologized for. I don't know. I know. I think he apologized for Howling too. Yeah, um, I loved it though. I I was. I'm a fan. And that fucking song on the Howling too. Oh my god. Yeah, Howling, she, was a, in, she was in Howling too. Your sister's a werewolf. Yeah. Yeah. Your sister is a were bitch. <laughs> yeah. She's done like activist stuff like for black literature and stuff like that. She seems awesome, dude. Um if you speaking of singing and speaking of Sir Christopher Lee, if you've never seen the return of Captain Invincible, I recommend that. It, he plays a uh, I think Alan Arkin plays the hero. Uh he's a Superman type, you know, flying brick and uh yeah. I don't, I don't remember why, but like he's gone into retirement, and Sir Christopher Lee is kind of a Lex Luthor type. Oh, you know, cool! Man, scientist, yeah. and he, when uh, the character, the he, superhero, regains his powers and starts doing super stuff again, it, it's It'd a, be a great movie, man. Obviously. But uh, yeah. Sir Christopher Lee sings this song called "Choose Your Poison." 
and it was the first time I ever heard him sing. And, and I'm I'm sure you all you two have heard some of his heavy metal stuff, uh, War Cry um, mm -hmm. and all that. It was like, man, what what's it called again? The, uh, the Return of Captain Invincible, I believe. Now you got me down. Yeah. It. Let's see. Sir Christopher Lee, choose your poison. Sir Christopher name, Lee. Name your poison. Sorry, name your poison. Return name of poison. Captain Invincible. Yeah. No Blu ray, though. No. It's a. Uh, In my mind, his scenes deserve the Blu-ray, but the rest of it, it's another one of those films. You know how sometimes you'll watch films for certain actors? Like yeah. uh, Halloween 4 and 5. Yep. Uh, can't, even, can't even get it. But yeah, I, I there's a DVD, but I, I don't pay 20 bucks for DVDs anymore. Not unless yeah. it's something special. <laughs> but like I, I watch Halloween 4 and 5 and 6. Specifically... For Donald Pleasance, not for whatever yeah. the story is or, or any of that. Yeah, <laughs> the only reason, though. Now, without trying to like a perverted old man, I, I don't watch it because of Daniel Harris, but the fact that I appreciate her and am a fan of hers, you know, I, I watch some of it. You know, look back on that, but I, I'm watching. Yeah, it I, I think she Donald she does a very good job. Uh, especially for a child actor in four, in four, five, yeah. you went when they had the whole mute thing going on. Yeah, that was a little, I don't know. But uh, four, I think she did a really good job. You guys, I, I think she eyes. did a good job in five. I think that the, the problem with that was just kind of the, the script with five. Yeah. yeah. You guys know I'm biased when it comes to her. That's my crush, man, you know. Yeah, it, it's weird, and and I know I've, I've spoke on this in the past, you know, we're the same age as Jamie Lee Curtis, so whenever we watch those, Jamie Lee Curtis, God damn it, Daniel oh, Harris, fuck, uh, Dar Daniel, Har Daniel Harris. Oh, we're not that uh, old yet, but yeah. you know, three years uh, on us. <laughs> but, uh, so when we watch those movies, we were the same age. Now we're old ass men, and we go back to watch that, remembering having a crush on them when we were kids, and it's like, nope. But then you see it's her these days. It's like okay, yeah. now uh, it's it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, same I, one I, with Sleepaway Camp. <laughs> I really, 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 I wish the director of Halloween Ends could see this and say, "Dude, throw her in, even if it's just walking down the street as a yeah, Jamie Lloyd has to be it. Yeah, dude, let's it's, start a petition, dude." <laughs> No, I, I'm with Butch. It doesn't even yeah. have to be Jamie Lee Lloyd. I mean, Jamie Lloyd. It just, yeah. just fucking put Daniel Lee. I mean, God damn it. I'm fucking, I, I only had four beers and then I fuck, I can't fucking speak. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I agree. And I, I love also, Jamie Lloyd in there, though. I mean, but yeah, I'm with y'all. I mean, if it's not Jamie Lloyd, put Daniel Harris in there, man. You I know. mean, I'm about put fucking uh, Busta Rhymes in it. You know, it, yeah, and if no, nothing no, else, no, 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 it, no. if nothing no, else, no. give us at least a bust the rom fucking song in it. Okay, I mean, I, I was as you said that I was gonna. Well, we can throw one of his songs in because so. I fucking I love I love Freddie Harris, and I know that's probably a, that's m most people don't love Freddie Harris, but I fucking yeah. love Freddie Harris. Yeah, uh, but uh, nah. I think somebody else I'd like to see in Halloween ends. Is uh, Malcolm McDowell? Oh, dude, now that cool. would be interesting. Yeah, that'd be cool, man. Yeah, um, that'd be I mean, awesome, dude. Again, he, he obviously he's not playing Samuel Loomis. Yeah, so yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He's not playing uh, Jamie, uh, whoever. <laughs> but have them, I have them walk down the street together, <laughs> dude? That dude, would be cool. Be great. Oh, I'd deal yeah. with that. I, I could deal with yeah. that shit. I don't. I don't think David Gordon Green would do it though. I, I don't know, but of course, I mean, uh, you know, he brought uh, you know the Tommy character back, and I say the Tommy character because he didn't bring the original guy as Tommy back. Well, yeah, uh, but, but, huh? Red turned it down. He was offered. It was offered to him. 
Was it? I, well, I didn't really? even think he offered it to him. Wow. I read he was offered, and he's like, you know, for, he's doing something, and, and he said he couldn't do it. And he, quote, gave his blessing to um, Michael uh, Anthony. David, Michael, Michael, Michael Anthony Hall. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, he gave him his blessing. Me and, I mean, uh, give me Paul Rudd back, but I know that they probably couldn't do that because Paul Rudd's schedule is fucking crazy these days. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's why. Apparently he wanted to. Uh, again, this was something I read. And, uh, How different would uh, that movie have been if, uh, if he was back? I don't <laughs> that would have been cool. I really don't think it would have been that much different. Um, I was really... I was, you know, we, we talked about this a little bit uh, about Halloween, uh, Halloween Kills. A lot of people are just giving it a lot of crap, and the I think its biggest problem is it's the middle child of a trilogy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So for sure. you don't want to have really any resolution. Yeah, you're not. The conflict's going to go over to the next film. Not just, uh, we're holding, we're holding, we're holding. Okay, here's the third film. No, and, and I don't think Halloween Kills was that either. It was yeah. the metal, 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 metal kid, the, the bridge, and I agree with that. But you know what? For a metal fucking bridge, What's it did everything. It, it hit all the, everything I wanted it to hit. It fucking me, hit. Me too, man. Like Halloween Ends is gonna have to be really fucking good to like. I mean, which I think it will be too. You know, um, but it's gonna because I love Kills a lot, man. But, I, I think it's one of the reasons they brought in. Oh gosh, I can't even think of her name. Lindsay, the the actress. They brought mm-hmm. all those act- actors and actresses back. Um, I think the story maybe was a little weak, um, or at least lacking. It could have been stronger. Yeah. Uh, I, I like the idea between the behind the how evil dies tonight. Evil mm-hmm. dies. Yeah. But, Kind of reflective of our society right now. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It really is. And um, I will say this: um, th- this is just my my opinion. Okay, um, Halloween ends is going to have to involve taking his mask off and destroying yep. it. That's how they'll yeah. get rid of Michael Myers. Yeah, because if you think about it, in this continuity, Michael. Gets arrested at the end of Halloween one, and is in the loony bin for thirty, forty years, however many. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The minute and I, I saw this in the theater, and the Halloween was it 2018, 20, 2017, whichever one that was. Yeah, uh, eighteen. Twenty eighteen. Yeah. And he brings up the mask, and he's holding it to him. It's like, are you a freaking idiot? Yeah, no, right. yeah, he's for real. Holding it out. Jason Voorhees, and you're handing him a hockey mask. Yeah, here you go, buddy. <laughs> Literally just signed your death. <laughs> yeah, and if you funny. notice in that scene when they when he has the mask coating it up to Michael Myers, I'm trying to do it in my camera and not get you know really white fingers. All the other inmates go crazy. There mm-hmm. is something, you know. Where do you get into the? I don't know if you guys watched that video that me and me and some friends uh, did. And well, is he supernatural? Is Michael Myers supernatural? Michael Myers is mild, at least mildly supernatural. Yeah, I'd say definitely. Yeah. And the scene with the loonies, I'm sorry, the the mentally challenged folk <laughs> going crazy when that mask is out. To me, that proves it. There is something about that mask, and you know when they took it off, supernatural. And how yeah. it feels, they were able, actually able to to do some damage to him, and yeah. then once he put it back on, he, they still could do some damage. So it's like it had to recharge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think I think you will. They'll take the mask off, and you'll see uh, probably Tommy Lee Wallace, his face, and that's how he'll die. Yeah. Now, I, I, I wonder if they'll give the mask any kind of prop. Probably not, like that you can like you know see or anything. But um, I'm with you. I think there's something mildly supernatural about the mask too. You know, that, that gives them extra, extra shit. You know, I don't yeah. know. It'd be interesting to see. 
and to set up the next set of Halloween films, which we all know they're going to make another one eventually. Oh, yeah, yeah. The mask will probably disappear. Yeah. Like they, they think yeah. they burned it or something, and then, like, the last scene, you know, oh, oh I'm going to... 2050, there's some little kid. <laughs> don't like. yeah. His name will not, shouldn't be Michael Myers. It, it should, you know, but yeah, it should be I like agree. an innocent little kid who. They don't you know, know, just, oh, cool mask. Look at this. Yeah. Yeah. And basically, in my mind, gets demon possessed and basically just shoved out of his own body. And whatever <laughs> is in the mask just takes him over. Yeah. What 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 I would like to see is you 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 know how we're, we're, right now we're living in the in the age of let's disregard this sequel and that sequel and this sequel. So what I would like to see is yes, let's have you know disregard five and um, six. Let's uh, let's do a uh, a sequel to four. Set in the future where uh, Jamie Lloyd, you know, becomes the killer. That it, because oh. that's what they should have fucking done with five in the first place. That'd because be the yeah. the way that four fucking ends, and and you have her, you know, killing her, you know, stepmom. I mean, her not stepmom, but her adopted mom or whatever, yeah. or stabbing her. I don't. I I I, 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 I guess. Yeah. He just said uh, in five, they he she didn't die, you know. Mm-hmm. But you know, let's let's disregard five and six and then do a sequel from four. I think that would that'd be, be cool. cool, too. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I, Both of those would be great, man. I, and uh, you know, when they did Scream Three, what I really mm-hmm. thought it was going to end with was we were going to find out that the killer, and you had the two killers, of course. That one of them was Nev Campbell's character. I can't think Sydney. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's yeah, Sydney yeah. Prescott. I think that's her character's name. Yeah, and she, after everything went through the first film and the second film, she had lost it and had had a massive, possibly schizophrenic break. And she had literal MPD, multiple personality disorder. And she was going around killing people and didn't know it. And you know, in my mind, towards the end, you know, they finally catch the tail and they pull the mask off, and it's Sydney. And I yeah, thought, that would have been fucking cool. Yeah. And then they, you know, that didn't happen. Then when four came out, I'm like, okay, perfect. She thought everything was okay. She's on her meds, and do it. You know, no. As far as I know, they've never done it, but I kept thinking that would be the perfect ending. Is it's finally her? She yeah. has it for all these films That'd and all the damage. Crazy. She's done. Well, you know, we got uh, Scream uh, 5 in two months. Maybe it yeah. happens there. Or I guess they're not actually calling it Scream 5. They're calling it Scream. Even I though that, that's fucked with me. Like, why call Halloween? They call it, like, Halloween 40 years later. You know, kind of like it was, you know, is advertised like at times. You know, yeah. Like, like, yeah. 40. Yeah. I think everybody knows there's not been 39, or excuse me, 38 other sequels to Halloween. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, I, I hate while we're that we have to to say Halloween 2018 because now it's going to be uh, Scream 2022 or yeah. or something because you know yeah. they couldn't just go Halloween uh, Scream Five is it is it a, a, a soft re, uh, reboot yeah probably yeah. but uh, I don't know hopefully yeah. it'll be good though man I'm, I'm looking forward to it oh I am too so many things like that where they you have this great backstory. You, it's like this thing you used to hear about people doing Star Trek. And it's like, well, I don't want to have to use all that backstory. Well, then go write something else. You have the, you have the, you know, like comics, uh, novels with existing characters, films like, you know, like me and Doug are talking, and you are talking about. <clears throat> if you want to give it a, oh, yeah. like, like kind of like Halloween three season of the witch. Yeah. You could call it Halloween Season of the Witch, and everybody else knows it's Halloween Three. Right. You know, give it if you want to do that. Um, Dude, I hear Star Trek. I'm. I don't really get into Star Trek much, but I hear this. They're they're sensitive about that. The fans are about like the 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 movies and shit, man. You know how they you know. Right here, right here buddy. 
those those Jar Jar Abrams films. It's like, yeah, <laughs> Star Trek. Uh, <laughs> yes, I love those Abrams bad. films. <laughs> we don't I have enough. Star Wars. Go ahead. I was just gonna say I love Star Wars a lot, but I never really got into Star Trek much, you know. But yeah, I hear you guys, man. They're they're fucking. I hear they're really sensitive about that stuff. The Trekkies, man. I think all fans are really sensitive about. Yeah, it. Star Wars is saying it's the same thing. They're sensitive <laughs> with those. I think oh so. God! I think <laughs> Wacky uh, got summoned by the power of Star Trek. Star Trek, Trek yeah. <laughs> yeah, some, somehow Wacky, we got from talking about this amazing film, uh, a Dracula eighty nineteen seventy two to, you know, I, Star I, Trek. I, I, it, it happens. <laughs> like yeah. Um. If the the film or TV series or whatever you do is good, eventually the fans will come around. Case in point, yeah. I did not care for Star Trek Deep Space Nine when it first came out. Mm-hmm. Star Trek Deep Space. Let me let me say this. Let me look directly in the camera. Everybody look uh-huh. in my eye. You know, I love Star Trek the original series. The best Star Trek series of all time is Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Yeah, say that as serious as I can. <laughs> I say that, yeah. It is. I mean, I love Deep Space Nine. Lackey, uh, yeah. he he agrees. <laughs> maybe if I give a maybe if I gave Star Trek another chance, I'd like it. Uh, oh, Star Trek is amazing. It yeah. is. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, I mean, thing to remember par- Trump, is if you start watching the the series serieses. Series. Uh, the the interesting thing is you have next June come out in eighty seven, and it's very episodic, where you yeah. can watch any episode in any order, and it doesn't really matter that much. I mean, you have a little yeah. bit like this character left, that character left. Deep Space Nine. I, I I'll go with him. I go with him. Yeah. D S Nine original series and Enterprise Interpr- Enterprise is yeah. better. Anyway. Deep Space Nine is very linear. You have to watch yeah. it in order. Yeah, in order, yeah. Uh, it, yeah. It, it, it's kind of symbolic of how TV changed from the yeah. late 80s to the 90s. Because then Voyager actually goes back to more episodic. Yeah. And it, it, it is a little more linear than, say, Next Gen. But yeah. it, it's not. You can still watch it out of order and it. Uh, other than maybe okay, who are the Kazon? Because you're dealing with a whole new quadrant, you know, the Kazon and the 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 yeah. and, and who and what. But for the most part, you just go okay, it's Alien of the Week, and Enterprise yeah. is is very. You start out with the launch of the first spaceship and the things going on. Jeffrey Combs, <laughs> Jeffrey Combs is amazing in everything. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, I tell you this much. I had this crazy idea in the shower last Saturday. I asked oh, you again, Doug, where is that in your house and when are you going to bed? <laughs> <laughs> if I was put in charge of yeah. a new Star Trek series, my captain would be Bruce Campbell. Oh, yeah. God. Jeff Combs would be, I don't, maybe not the first officer, but he would be one of the senior officers. And I'd be like, dude, who do you want to play? And do you want to play a race? Do you want to be a human? You know, what do you want? And just let them imagine Bruce Campbell and Jeff Combs God. bouncing off each other in Star Trek. That would be great. <laughs> that well, would be fucking. Is, they have what? They have humans, Vulcans, and I know they have humans, oh, Vulcans. The, and yeah. Then, uh, don't, don't, don't get caught up in that, dude. Actually, yeah. go watch, watch some of Wacky's videos, dude. He's, 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 he, uh, some of his alien, like, I, actually. <laughs> The alien uh, uh, um, uh, one that he put out, he only put the lizard person in there very, very brief- briefly just yeah. because he didn't want to be marked because, you know, well. Yeah. Yeah. You put yeah, man, maybe uh, Star out, Trek I mean, in a fucking video and they're fucking marking y'all up and down. I'll, uh, I'll put it in my queue, man. Like, I got so much shit I need to catch up on. I'll, uh, I'll Net- Netflix has them. a has a lot, but if you have Paramount Plus, you got everything. Yeah. My understanding I'm still gonna watch Dune too. I'm gonna watch Dune tonight. I think 
the new dude. My understanding is all the Star Trek series and films are moving to Paramount Plus. Oh, cool! Because I got that. Yeah. Yeah, Paramount. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, get, yeah it, Paramount Plus, dude, and just. What watch the original series? It's so fucking amazing. Yeah, and it's like cool. it's like it was only three seasons. And yeah, I remember seeing the, some when I was a kid. And those were pretty cool. Uh, but I never got into the Deep Space Nine or the Next Generation or any of that. You know, I, I would recommend Trent uh, make if you can watch the original series with the remastered and the special effect updated special effects. Yeah, just cause it's. If nothing else, it's a little bit easier to follow because it's something to remember when watching the original series. They were made on about five bucks each episode. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I don't mean that in any real way. I, I, I mean, oh yeah, for, I for the budget it. they put. Well, let me turn that off. Way over oh, there, damn. near yeah. that light, is two autographed William Shatner pictures. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, and. and it, you can't see it because right now there's a picture of me and my wife with William Shatner. Okay, so yeah. I'm, I'm a I'm an original series fan. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm not talking shit, but they were filmed on us. You know, the budgets were very low budget, limited, yeah. very quick. So you do have to accept a little bit of that. You can't just look at it. Have you seen Babylon Five? Um, terrible CG, but good run. I have seen a little bit of Babylon Five. I tried to watch it when it was on. And Fox 43 kept bouncing it around, and I would get so lost. I, mean, I missed a whole season because it was on at like 2 o'clock Sunday morning or something. So, that uh, one, uh, was that J. Michaels? J. Michaels Krasinski? Krasinski? Yeah. yeah. Did, did, did Peter David have anything to do with that? Is it, or is it just your, I, J. He Mon- had, I think he like helped write it or something, and my understanding is they... Again, I, I don't know. Okay, this is at least secondhand at best. There was a falling out between Peter David and Straczynski, uh. and uh, apparently Peter David still doesn't have much good to say about JMS. Really, <laughs> and, uh, and Peter? If you ever want to read Star Trek novels, if it says Peter David, pick it up. Mm-hmm. God, Peter David is a writer. It's fucking man. amazing. <laughs> I remember they were good. I mean, like you said, they were low budget as hell. But I mean, like I loved. I mean, like uh, Lost in Space, V. I loved V when I was a kid. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, well, yeah. V probably had a bigger budget, but Lost in Space kind of seemed like it was low budget a little bit. Oh, too, yeah. You know? And you have to remember that <clears throat> even they didn't have how how low the technology of special effects was in the '60s. Let me turn that light back on. Getting a little dark yeah. here. Um. You can't. You didn't just go down to the local store and buy some masks and mess with it. I mean, Michael, going yeah. back, backtracking. Michael Myers's mask is a William Shatner Captain Kirk mask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Painted and painted white. True that. Yeah. Um, you didn't have stuff like that. I mean, everything you see in Trek, they created. Peter David, my favorite comic writer. Actually wrote a few episodes with the main man whose names I can't spell. Wrote ninety two out of one ten. That is crazy. Uh, main yeah. man JMS, <clears throat> John Michael Straczynski. Uh, mm-hmm. I ignore his run on Thor before anybody says anything. I can r- read his Thor run, but his uh, Spider Man run was good, if not kind of condescending, maybe a little bit. But Peter David, I just just to throw this out there now, we're talking about Peter David. His uh, X Factor, holy shit! Yeah. It, his newer, his newer X Factor, and I say newer, it's probably a good ten years old at this point. But you know, God, it was so good. His, his original yeah. X Factor was good as well. Uh, but That's I am just say. now reading it. Yeah. So I, I can't really. I've not read it front to back yet. So I, uh, I had most of that run, and I always hated Quicksilver, Pietro. I can't mm-hmm, say mm-hmm. right. He made me kind of like Quicksilver, uh, and he took you know a lot of D-list characters, as they say, and they were all interesting. Yep. And the Hit. stuff he did with uh, Jamie Madrox, the most. Oh God, did yeah, I know? I know. <laughs> 
to me that that's the right that's the mark of a good writer when you could take a uninteresting or seemingly one beat character and do something with them and make them interesting you know grant morrison alan moore uh the, you know the to me that's the, that is the sign of a good driver yep i agree wacky it, it is so good so good x factor yeah blue too Shatterstar intro. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> I throw I throw a series out, a comic book series out for you if you've never seen it. It's called I'll be right Planet. back. This one real quick. Okay. Um, you've ever read or heard of Planetary? Planetary. Uh, yeah, that's um. um is that Arthur Warren Ellis? Ellis? Warren Ellis. Okay. Yeah. Warren um, Ellis and uh, Cassidy, John Cassidy. Uh, John Cassidy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, right over here. I've got the omnibus. I got it one year for Christmas. I, I have all the issues, but uh, I think I told you how when we were buying, trying to get the what we, this house, you know, like all my stuff was put up, all of our stuff was put up, and that that and at the time, Planetary and Astro City were my two favorite books. And I'll never forget, uh, Astro City and Planetary both came out one week, and I remember looking at James Bridges over at Collector's Universe going, the world is coming to an end. (laughs) 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 You know, Kurt Busiak on on Astro City, uh, he wrote that when when he had time, and same thing on on Planetary. They they were not on a schedule, but I love Planetary so much. I I know uh, Ellis is... Some some bad things that come out about his behavior and things he's done. Yeah. Past. I'm not condoning those by any way, shape, form, or fashion. But God, I love Planetary so much. Wacky, well, make it happen, man. That would be uh, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, um, a fucking. I mean, his Transmetropolitan is is really fucking good. I couldn't get into that. I, I don't really. Think- disconnected with me there I, I i have like the first or i used to have like the first uh five ish issues and just you know how sometimes books just don't sit with you and in um case in point uh the fog joe carpenter's the fog i bought it <laughs> on a two pack with uh that and assault on precinct 13 of course both of these being the original the remix hadn't happened yet and I put the fog in, and you've seen the fog. You know, the beginning is uh, the, old, the old guy telling the ghost story, and I couldn't care less. And I tried to watch it like five times, and finally one day I put it in. And I set the remote away from me. I mm-hmm. said, "My God, I'm going to watch this film." Well, like after like ten minutes, I was hooked. Really, I'm so glad you said you were hooked because I'm I'm the same way with that movie. I don't like it. I'm just movie. like, oh, but so I you had, do. Like, had to be ready for it, I guess. Same way with mm-hmm. Transmetal is is I was at the time I wasn't in the mindset for it, and um, I've sold a lot of books to Jonathan, and he's like, "You bought this?" I'm like, "Yeah, I don't know why." I, mean, I used to buy so many <laughs> comics, and I would read them. Like, oh, that sucked, and still buy them. <laughs> oh yeah. So. Oh, the Boom Studio uh, Studios Power Rangers. <laughs> um, um, we got uh, w- one of the uh, last year, one of the Boom Studio hardbacks. It's kind of like the uh, Omnibus kind of. Uh-huh. Oh, it's fucking beautiful. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, one of the Power Ranger ones. I think, I think Boom did that. Uh, there was a great run on the Lone Ranger, of all things. Oh, that's it wasn't crazy. Be two, uh, but it was really interesting. Um, hey, wacky! Yeah. Did you did you read the uh, the Power Ranger uh, Turtle crossover? I think I guess it was an IDW Boone crossover thing that they did. I actually I bought those those comics, but I've I've yet to read them. <laughs> Was kind of like the Batman Turtles. I've got both of all three series. I think they've done. I've not fucking read any of them yet. IDW did Star Trek Year Five. 
weird. Was it? Was it good? It was. It was. Eh, at times, it was really good. Uh-huh. At times, it was just okay. But the nice thing, what the interesting thing was, as at the end of the um, um, original okay. series, they basically call them back. So they go back through, and they hit a lot of the worlds that they had hit on their way out. So you you, you have some reference, like uh, um, like I think they go by the. Uh, the uh, mobster world piece of the action thing. So they hit. It's not. I don't want to make it sound like a retread because it's not. Uh-huh. But there, there are callbacks to it. Um, kind of like uh, the the beginning scene of uh, Dracula AD seventy two, where you, you kind of call back to the gothic uh, Draculas, and, and then you get to the modern. It, it's kind of a that kind of thing where. Okay. Cool. Well, guys, had a great time streaming, I watching. I thought of a Star Trek episode that I liked uh, from the original series, but I'll, I'll, I'll wait till next time to share it. So. Oh, no, no, no. Share it away, man. Well, share it away. Well, you know how Spock, he's a Vulcan. He's real logical, you know. It's where they went to this planet, and uh, there was some kind of flowers, and he was he was hanging off a tree laughing. It got him high and stuff, kind of like an Odyssey. <laughs> of paradise. Yeah, Spock was mm. laughing like his ass off, and uh, it was kind of like an Odyssey when they went to the Homer's Odyssey. They went to the island and it was Cyclops and ate the Lotus, and they didn't want to leave because they were happy and high. That's yeah. one I, episode I remember I really liked. Red Flesh and Blood by Robert Cannell. I, I, I'm not familiar uh, with it. Mm. Look, I've read that, Wacky. But yeah, I'll, I'll go check those out again, guys. Uh, yeah, I'll start with the original series, and I remember liking some of them, you know. Uh, I think I enjoy them. I enjoy them more going back watching them now than I did when I watched them as a kid. Yeah. Because as a, I was as a, as a kid, I was uh, I was a Star Wars kid. Yeah. And me too. Yeah. Now, you know I'm you know, but as an adult, I'm still a Star Wars adult. But I also love fucking Star Trek as an adult. Yeah. Where I okay, did as a watch kid. This I'm gonna tie it back into the movie for you. <laughs> you got Peter Cushing, who was in Star Wars Episode Four, and Dracula AD seventy two. And um, so I remember I was talking somewhere, and I was talking about Star Wars, and my dad knew I loved it. Uh, and he said, "Well, there's a TV show that's just like this, just like that." And I said, "Well, what is it? It's called Star Trek." So I watched it, and I was like, "Huh." Where <laughs> Star Wars, um, not Episode Four, not Empire, but uh-huh. kind of starting with Jedi. I hate to say this, and I'm not trying to throw you know nothing in nobody's face, but it gets, starts getting a little kitty to me. Um, with the Ewoks <clears throat> and the Jabba stuff, yeah. Oh God, I hate the teddy bears. I hate the teddy bears. <laughs> If they had been looking like they were supposed to be, that would have been so much better. I mean, yeah. rip the stormtrooper. What's up, head. Al? <clears throat> oh, Al's here. Cool. What's up, Al? <clears throat> I can't see it. So, but um, God, now I got distracted. <laughs> but that's how I actually started watching Star Trek. And not to say there aren't episodes of Star Trek, the original series, that aren't, aren't silly. Uh, but it all it started it got me to think more and, and as i got a little bit older you know um i'll admit it, i like star wars episode four and episode five i like rogue one yeah. um rogue one was really good yeah okay that's really about it to be perfectly honest okay i throw jedi in just because we get the end because my favorite star wars character is vader but yeah <clears throat> star trek dr peter Cut- oh my god I have a new I have a new friend for him saying that right there. Peter Cushing <laughs> is my favorite Doctor Who. Yeah, I said it. You're not the only one, my friend. You are not the only. <laughs> He's the only Doctor Who to me. Yeah. But um. So yeah, so Doctor wacky. Awesome. I, 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 I I searched that flesh and blood. Um, I don't see it anywhere. Is is uh is it a? I'm guessing it's a book, and not a comic though, right? Because I, I searched it on Amazon. 
Amazon doesn't have everything, obviously. What? But... How dare you say that? <laughs> Actually, there was there was a couple of people in uh, Dracula AD that was in. Uh, uh, oh, okay. So yeah, I'm seeing there's actually. Well, they do have it on Amazon. It just didn't come up with my fucking search because I just did a web search, and it's there. It's a comic. Hammer horror horror stall. Whoa. Oh shit. That's interesting. Nice. Yeah. Let's check it out, dude. We have a quick uh, oh. here. Aww. Hey, buddy, buddy. Macaulay. What's up? Yeah. I gotta go feed my little monster in a minute. Yeah, for some some reason it didn't come up at first, but now, well, of course, you can't see it. But yes, yeah. even the art on that looks fucking amazing, and that looks like a Christopher Lee fucking. Uh, Dracula, but good God, yeah. 50 bucks. Woo. Let's see it again, man. <laughs> well, I, it, it's not really, really coming up really well on there. Yeah. Uh, but yes, that looks, looks fucking up, yeah. awesome, dude. Yeah. Hold on, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, flash it up. You know what's yeah, crazy? I'll, I'll flash it up, fellas. When I saw Count Dooku the first time, I didn't even think Christopher Lee. I just saw Count Dooku. That's how good he did with that shit, you know? I really wish they had had a, even even if it was just them passing, there had been a scene with Dooku and Grand Moff Tarkin, like, walking by each other. You know, just kind of I know, up. right? Yeah, just, yeah, some kind of, yeah. Some kind of semblance, a throwback kind of, yeah. Doug busily typing and all right, here we go. Okay. I think my wife's home. I can hear Cooper. <laughs> uh oh, here we go. Uh -oh. Here we go. Really cool, man. Oh, yeah. I put his glasses on. It does look good. That art looks amazing. Yeah, it, it does. does. Robert Tunnell. Hey, can you send that to me in a... a yeah. In of course, or... like I said, this thing, woo, 50 bones, man. But yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll send that. It'd probably be worth it, though, you know. Christopher Lee was my favorite yeah. doctor. That's what uh that's what uh Black was saying too. Yeah, dude. No, actually he said Peter Cushing was Yeah, he was saying Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Where's that's it? right. My bad. As far as I know, Christopher Lee was not, did not play Doctor Who. It was, if it if I, I do like uh, I do like that being <laughs> a dream. That, that 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 would have been an interesting dream. <laughs> <laughs> no, that happened in two towers. <laughs> two towers. Oh shit! And then Saruman, and then Saruman told Harry Potter to use the Force, and Harry replied, <laughs> "I am Groot." <laughs> towers too. Might as well start making our own um, a volume two for fifteen bucks. That's not bad. Oh shit, dude! Can't go wrong with my dude. comic shop. Yeah. Damn. That looks really good, Wacky. It's interesting. Thanks really for turning me on to that. I'll, uh, yeah, it looks sweet, dude. I wonder if it's on like Comicsology. Comicology. I'll have to check that out. Of course, if it was, it would have told me there since Amazon owns that. Apparently, now yeah, I got a lot of a lot of things to do for Christmas list, man. You know. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes oh yes oh yeah well we're just we're crossing all the streams all right now guys we got Gollum. we got <laughs> we got the ring girls and oh yes have you ever seen uh 
it's one of the scary movies. The name "scary movie" it does a take on the ring. God, I can't even think of a scary movie after the first one. I know there were, there was like twenty seven of them, but I only remember the first one. The 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 ring, if I recall correctly, in one of them is it, it, it's it's an outhouse. You're looking up an outhouse when you see the oh, ring. Uh, oh, uh, okay, okay yeah. <laughs> and, crazy, and then uh, then the main girl starts beating the crap out of whatever. Her name starts with Vanessa. So I can't think of her name, but the well girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh God, those those movies, like the the original one, where um, like the dude hadn't had sex in so long and <laughs> or ever or whatever, and just blows the, the bush. fuck out of that. Yes. Oh my God, that was so fucking you funny. Do that. <laughs> no way. No way. <laughs> Hmm. All right. Seriously, on that note, I've got to get going. Yeah, I gotta go feed the dog, meet some, make some pizza. Guys, thanks for coming out. Guys, thanks for watching. As yeah, always, guys. stay spooky. Horror buddies. Oh, I'm gonna throw one in for you. As the great George A. Romero signed in my, in my book, stay scared. Oh. oh yeah! Thanks nice. for that. I appreciate it. Thanks yeah, for coming, thanks, Butch. Thanks, guys, man. Yeah, thanks, Butch, for for doing this with us, man. No problem. Right. Let me know. See you, guys. Right, See, See you later. Guys.